Welcome everybody, it's Tuesday night, we've got a debate planned, but he's not yet here. I haven't heard from him lately, though he was excited about it yesterday, so I don't know. He's in the UK, maybe uh, we got the time zone a little confused. Last week he was going to be here, uh, but I double booked, it was completely my fault, and he said, uh, I asked him if he could, if we could reschedule, he said yes. So... Um, <clears throat> That was on me last week, and I, I was, was on a different show with Christopher Enoch on his channel um, at 6 o'clock Central Time. It's 5 o'clock Central Time right now, which was, I, I offered to do it earlier because he's in the UK. So it's 11 p.m. in the UK instead of midnight uh, in the UK. So he said he thought that was good, but um, I don't know. I, I emailed him. I sent him the link, but um, I've got a few things while we wait and and of course i did uh i did ask bite mahagas if bite mahagas wants to come on but uh, for some reason bite mahagas is never able i don't know the keyboard protects it's the keyboard shield um <clears throat> but should you want to bite mahagas mc2 and at mc2.net uh <laughs> consider ion says consider adding shows up late for the debate to the bingo card a good idea uh <laughs> so well uh last week uh a uh, oh oh we've got we've got a flurf we've got uh and i he hello all right hold hold on all right they can hear you now yeah, so i'm a little late a little late i've been a bit busy sorry about that okay well uh, how, what do i call you Kelbeda. Kelbeda, okay, because I wanted to be sure I got the pronunciation right. Um, sure. I will. Sorry, even... I've, I've just got in. Can you give me two seconds just yeah, to that's, get ready? That's fine. Gonna... That's fine. Um, all right, well, people, we are in luck. Kelbeda is here. Uh, will you be on camera? I think he, I think he mentioned that he, he probably would, I think, so. Right. Well, let me tell you. Let me tell you this. Last uh, last week, a uh, UFC fighter, Bryce Mitchell, announced uh, that. Well, you know, he started talking about flat Earth, and and he had a little little spat with um, Joe Rogan, and so he he called he called Joe Rogan some names, and then uh, demanded that Joe Rogan debate him. Well, Joe Rogan doesn't debate flat Earth. But I do. So I said, hey, I'll do it. Um, but Bryce has not answered me yet. So you know what I did after I posted on t his Twitter, his his TikTok, his Instagram, his Facebook. Um, uh, I found that he, he has a thing on millions.co where you can ask him anything. And the price was reasonable enough. <laughs> so here's what I did. <laughs> I did it. I uh, I. You see, you see there what I paid. Um, and here's the question that I asked him. So uh, he he is now uh, committed to answer this question in video form. So uh, read that at your leisure. Uh, Kelbeta, how you doing? One second. Okay, that's fine. I'll, I'll read this quick then. Uh, yeah. You don't need to pay attention to this, Kelbeta. I said, Bryce! <laughs> You called Joe Rogan a sissy for not agreeing to debate you on Flat Earth. What adjective shall I use to describe you since you've been dodging me for days after I challenged you to debate on Joe Rogan's podcast on the topic of Flat Earth? And I gave him a link to the video where I challenged him. I said, I've replied to your posts and sent DMs to your Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The silence is troubling. If you've not yet noticed, you're too far hidden in your ivory castle, ivory tower. If you have noticed and refused to reply, then again, what adjective shall I use to describe you? When will we debate on Flat Earth on Joe Rogan's podcast? And then I didn't, uh, that last one I did not include to him. So there it is. There is my uh, my question that, uh, that uh, Bryce Mitchell is committed to answer. So, all right. Still setting up there? Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So Kel Kelbeta was uh he's been traveling, he said, and and so he's not I think he's not at home and so has a little bit of whatever, I don't know. It's uh to to get set up and he doesn't have his normal stuff, so a little bit of grace there for him. Um ooh, and I've got I've got a little my my uh my jar is a little small tonight of Toon Chai just to gotta be uh Got to be uh, cautious with that. All right. Oh, I'll send you. You can see my video. You can see me there, Kelbeta. He wasn't seeing me. Now he can. Hello. Uh, oh, there we are. All right. Let me. Let okay. Me set can, this can, up. I, uh, can I do a little bit of a disclaimer first? Sure. Just a second. Let me get let me get you on screen so people can see you. Okay. Let's see what okay. you're. Uh, Kel Beta. There it is. You can call me Kel. Or Kel. All right, there it is. There, there is Kel Beta. All right, go ahead. Okay, a couple of things. First, this is uh, this is my first ever debate um, on anything ever. Um, second, I had everything ready for last week. Um, I'm traveling on business and to visit family. I've left my laptop uh, up with my family, so I've been doing it on my phone. Um, I reset my phone without thinking a couple of days ago. So I lost all the evidence. I had to go and get it all back. I've got most of it. Some of it I couldn't find, but I found other examples. But these other examples weren't as clear um, as the first ones. Um, and also, I've been really busy today. I was meant to organize them all, but um, I haven't been able to do that. So just bear with me. <laughs> all right. That's that's fine. Um, people people didn't expect the the, uh, the face mask, but... Um... Yes. Yeah, there, there's a lot of stuff going on in the Flat Earth community at the moment. It seems like a huge scandal may be about to uh, be uncovered. Um, that's gone back like five years, at least, with the leadership. It's an Illuminati thing. So I may or may not be able to tell you guys. Uh, if I get confirmation from my friend, then I may be able to tell you at the end. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, do you, uh, do you have your, some stuff that you want to show? Or yeah, I've got lots of stuff. How would I do this? I'm not really. I've never shared uh, my screen before. Uh, well, let me. Uh, I'm pretty sure I already set the permissions so that you can share your screen. Okay, one yes, second. Yes, you you can share your screen, and I know you're on mobile, so you it, it's you can you have to hunt around a little more, I think, but uh, you can do it yeah. on mobile, and people will see what you're sharing. Sure. If you just give me one sec. Sure. I did. Yeah, I I got a little little beverage here that I'll enjoy while. Yeah, what is that? I, I always see you drinking that. What is that? Toonshine. Yeah, what is Toonshine? Um, it's my beverage of choice. It's the exact same proof as Eric Dubay's two hundred proofs. <laughs> is it really shine? Um, well, it's shiny. <laughs> but like I said, it's the same proof as Eric Dubay's two hundred <laughs> proof. Right. So, so it's turpentine. <laughs> um, White spirit. No, it's the same proof as Eric Bay's 200 proofs. I, I don't get it. That's all right. Same proof as Eric Bay's 200 proofs. Uh, no proof. It's water. There you go. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So... Oh, shit, let me get my book. So uh, how does this start? I was thinking, um, if you present your first bit of evidence first, or I've got criteria that um, we could judge the debate on um, just for ourselves, for intellectual integrity purposes, um, that I think are quite objective. Okay. So maybe if I could say them first, you don't have to stick to them, but that's what I'll be going off. Okay. So these are your, your standard of evidence or 
your criteria. Yeah, for sta- standard standard of, of judging. Okay. First off, we ha- we have to de- agree that as this is a debate, it's not a scientific peer reviewed white paper thing. So it's not just uh, who is right and who is wrong. It, it also has an aspect of winning in, doesn't it? Yeah. And yes, uh, yeah. and and as a debate, um, both sides have got to potentially be allowed to win. So there can't be anything in the rules of who wins the debate, um, which means one side can't win, right? Both sides at the beginning have an equal chance of winning. That's fair. Cool. Um, and, uh, yeah, sorry, I thought it'd be in like an hour and a half ago. And I, I, I can organize everything, but I just got in. Okay. So, should I say the criteria? Uh, oh, I thought that was one. I thought that was the first one. That's not... What, what, okay. Oh, yeah. Well, that's just necessary for a debate, isn't it? I see. Okay. Yeah. And, and also, it's not who's right and who's wrong. Because in a debate, technically, the person with the wrong answer can be right, can't they? That's part of like a fundamental aspect of a debate. It doesn't matter empirically who's right oh, or wrong. L- like, like, a, like in an uh, academic-type debate, like debate club in schools and stuff? Or, or like in this type of debate, because if we wanted to show who's right or wrong, we could just do a paper and have it peer-reviewed, couldn't we? But the purpose that we're doing a debate and not that is because one of the fundamentals of a debate is empirically, it doesn't matter who's right or wrong. It's who has the most convincing argument. Otherwise, there'd be no need for a debate, would there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you make a point when it comes to like, I think that's more like the the competition style debates. I don't. Yeah, I don't uh, uh, generally talk about who won or who lost or anything like that in a debate. I, oh, I, I know, I know. Yeah. And we're not going to decide. I'm, but I'm just saying, so we're both on the same page as to what this is. You know, sure. Sure. It, you haven't got it in your mind as one of the standards is going to be who's empirically right. Because that, that's uh, not the purpose of a debate, is it? That's, I, that's I, I, I don't, I don't debate, know but. what what you mean but i i i think it's very important to consider who's you know what is empirically correct and that's hopefully yes, yes, part so. of part of the goal of what we're talking about is to is to, to sh- shake out the the you know the true you know reality oh definitely so, definitely and i i completely agree but what i'm trying to say is the fundamental nature of any debate is one going into it both sides have an equal chance to win in terms of there's nothing in the rules or the conditions determining who wins that would initially give one side an advantage over another, is what I'm saying. That's the first one. And secondly, the purpose of a debate, any debate, especially a debate where the answer is, quote unquote, known scientifically, um, the per- that it doesn't matter it's not one of the criteria who is right. It's one of the criteria is who can present the stronger argument because there'd be no need for a debate when the answer is already quote unquote known if having that specific answer. For example, if we're debating are whales fish or mammals, I could win the debate by saying they're fish because they live in the sea, they have fins, etc etc and you could lose the debate saying they're mammals even though they are mammals by arguing well at night they go onto land and they sleep on land so that makes them a mammal so empirically you've got the right answer but you lose the debate because one they don't do that they don't sleep on land and two your argument was a lot weaker the, um, we just talked about the nature of any debate yeah all right i i, I get that yeah yes. i have i have on i have uh one on my shelf here, the uh, the the uh, red book that's rules for debaters that talks talks about the uh, mostly the Lincoln Lincoln yeah. uh, whatever form of debate. Oh, I forgot this second guy in the Lincoln thing there. So anyway, okay, but we agree on those two things. Yeah, did you just have some tune shine too? Uh, water. <laughs> cheers, cheers to the tune shine. Um, 
Oh, I'm already spilling a little. Ooh, it's getting. <laughs> All um, right. Okay, so we agree on those two things. That's yeah, that's fine. So, all right. No, you were going to talk. Is it that wasn't like the your criteria that you were talking no, about? No, to, no, no. Right. That, that's just so we both know what a debate is and agree to that as a, as what a debate is. Yeah, L- Lincoln Douglas is what I was thinking of. Thank you for the yeah. the uh, the help from the the crowd here. <laughs> Okie dokie. So, what happens now? What you were going to talk about the criteria that you use for evaluating okay. evidence, right? Yeah. So um, first off, definitions, reality. Uh, I was going to look it up. I haven't got one. Um, I, it, just a common sense one. Reality is just, uh, it's, it's oh, God, I should have looked up one. Re- so if we're talking about reality, it's, um, so the, the greatest reality would be the reality that included all the other realities. So like the reality of an elephant from my perspective could just be its leg, but in reality, reality, it would be the whole elephant. Okay. It's getting a little okay. existential already. <laughs> um, so, um, and flat for flat, I'm using, um, two, two D, um, length and width, no height, area, but no volume, um, occupying a two-dimensional space of width and length, but not occupying, occupying a three-dimensional space as opposed to, so that would be a flat shape as opposed to a solid shape, which is length, width, and height, or it has volume, or it occupies a three-dimensional shape. I don't have to fulfill all the criteria flat. I just have to fulfill any one of them or so. But do you accept that as as definitions? And uh, it sounded like you 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 exited the three dimensional world there, though. What do you mean? Well, you know the the definition for flat that you used was a two dimensional plane, right? Which which doesn't it's, exist it's, in reality, it, it, right? That's just a concept. Well, yeah, it is a definition of flat. Yeah, in the dictionary. So I'm, that's what I'm talking. When I say flat, it could also mean um, not a regular shape, not a platonic solid, or anything near to a platonic solid. Um, it could mean. So, how would you describe like a flat pizza shape then? Because that has depth, obviously. It does. Yeah, I don't think people are actually generally confused about what is set, meant when people say flat Earth. There, there's. I, there's a couple flat earthers that try to play word games with it, but the, the yeah. people just laugh at them. When when somebody well, says that they think the Earth is flat, they they mean that that in general, the topology yeah. is is not what they're talking about. They're talking about in general the surface of the Earth is near to planar, and well, definitely not yeah. near to spherical. Well, that's one of the reasons that I well the main reason I agreed to do this debate was because when I was in the chat um, a couple of weeks ago of another one of your debates, uh, talking to Globetards, um, I realized the amount of assumptions, because not all Globers are Globetards, but the, the majority of Globers are glo- Globetards. And I realized the amount of assumptions that Globetards make um, and the amount of hypocrisy um, and how their ego is so big that it's actually a block uh, to them to seek the truth. So I thought by doing this debate, maybe I could help them uh, be a bit more adept at finding the truth by making them confront their many, many assumptions. So me as a flat earther, a truth seeker, I like to give evidence. Uh, I could give evidence of some of those quotes. So for example, there was one that made a quote about God um, and how we, uh, and how he was like a ridiculous winged figure, uh, and we hadn't been talking about religion or God, so he assumed I believed in a God, and he assumed that the very idea of a God was ridiculous. Um, another one, I asked, "Can you help me look over my argument?" And someone replied, "If you're a flat earther, uh, you need a lot more help than someone looking over your argument." 
to another one I said, um, if I could, could, could I present any evidence to you whatsoever to not say the world's flat or even suggest it's flat, but any evidence whatsoever that would even make you perhaps consider having a look at flat earth again to see if it's valid. And he said, maybe, but you'd have to debunk uh, all the laws of known physics. Um, and then he said, do you have precise um, measurements within a margin of error for, your, for the flat earth? if it's real, and I said, I don't, but there's a very good reason for that. And he says, I highly doubt it. Um, another one, which really surprised me, um, asked me, a, a triangle has sides one, one, and one. What are its internal angles? Um, did you get, did and, you get it right? Well, I, I got a answer, but, but the answer I gave was, I was trying to educate them on, you know, how much their assumptions and their ego are getting in the way. And I wanted to get back to that. So I just gave the answer that I was sure would have no response so we could, I could get back to helping them. So I obviously said 270 degrees and they laughed uh, and they called me an idiot. You obviously uh, said that? They, 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 well, I don't know if, if that's an obvious amount of ignorance to you. But, um, but they, they laughed uh, and they didn't know what I was talking about. And I realized, oh my gosh, these guys don't even know their own model. Because um, obviously that, that's the internal angles of a right angle triangle on a sphere. It would cover one eighth of a sphere with circumference four. Yeah. So I just said that so they couldn't try and ask me that question next. I could get back to helping them. Um, but he laughed. He didn't even know that was a possible answer, let alone an answer to his model. So when you offered me the debate, I was like, well, you know, I don't normally do this. I'm interested in truth. I'm interested in science. A debate can be very subjective. But at the very least, I'm going to, you know, try and help these globetards in the audience to be a bit more configured for, for seeking the truth. So that comes back to flat. What does flat mean as a flat earther? truth seeker i believe in reality uh the earth is flat now i know globe cards straight away and unfortunately some of their assumptions may have rubbed off on you you have been herding around these sphere sheep for a good few years and, and some negative things may have rubbed off on you but flat in terms of a dictionary also means two-dimensional uh having not having volume not occupying a three-dimensional shape, uh, a, a space as opposed to a solid, that would be a flat shape as opposed to solid shape, occupying a three-dimensional space, uh, length, width, and height, volume, etc. So uh, I've given, as a flat earther, I've given my definitions that I'm going to fulfill some or all of them for flat, um, because that's one of the meanings of flat. Um, and... You know, I, I tend to not assume things without evidence, but that's just me as a flat earther. So I just thought I'd make that clear for, you know, all the okay. orb in the chat. Um, all right. So that was, I, I, I summarized that by writing down reality for the first step of your... Um, writing down the word reality. The, the word reality, yeah. Okay. Is there is there more than one thing for your 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 criteria yeah sure so um C can the next one not be quite as long <laughs> so the first one is uh if necessary to show one position is arbitrary and the other is not so if they're both perspectives of reality if one position is an arbitrary ex perspective not different to any others then that's weaker than let's say an absolute perspective that would encompass that perspective plus add to it. So there would have to be a difference with a distinction with a difference for a extreme perspective, whereas there's only a distinction for an arbitrary one. That would be first. The second one would be if necessary to show that both perspectives are real. If they're both real, they won't contradict each other and they won't contradict 
the rest of established science. Um, if then in order to judge which are the most effect, which is the most effective, or which is going to win the argument, there's only really two criteria that matter. But I've given a list in ascending order. So, what was the initial aim of each perspective or each model? Um, did they achieve their aim? Can one model incorporate the other, but the other can't incorporate the first? Um, which scope does this model fall into? So, for example, globe perspective may fall into the scope of the uh, heliocentric model. Um, so, if, if applicable, can both make past and future predictions, both in the fields that deal with it and as a model in general? and observations, testable results. Um, second, uh, then how much of reality have they grown to encompass? So how much reality did they actually envelop without meaning to? Um, second to last one, which is even more important than testable predictions, is uh, how many questions have they answered that they didn't set out to answer? Because I see that as a true reflection of reality, a perspective that would be so fundamentally in, in touch with reality that it could solve questions that it didn't set out to answer or perhaps didn't even know exist in the field that it deals with or, if possible, in other fields that aren't its field. And that would really show, so like how a good novel can speak to many different aspects of humanity over long periods of time. That shows how in touch it is with fundamental reality and its scope. Whereas a simple book like Spot the Dog, Spot goes to the park, he sees his friend, he plays, he goes home, he sleeps. It's relevant, it's accurate, but it doesn't encompass, it's not fundamentally attached to reality. Doesn't encompass much reality, so therefore it's not as valid as a great work of literature, I'd say. And lastly, the potential scope um, of the view or the model. So, um, if we look a hundred years down the line, assuming the trajectories continue, what would be the scope of each other's perspective? And the one with the biggest scope obviously has the most value. Um, three criteria that don't make a lot of difference but if it is really neck and neck at the end could be used to decide first how is it defined is it a hypothesis a principle a theory a law etc um, i'm saying that's not really important uh, for the same reasons as what was the largest island in the world before australia was di discovered it was still australia it doesn't need uh, as to discover it um, and secondly how closely does our model fit to the reality uh, we know we're in so for well, example, I like that one yeah yeah that that's 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 not a strong one that's a very weak one oh um, so that that cut that's for a few reasons that can't be a criteria to really judge which argument wins and I'd say that just based on globe globe tard logic. Um, I often hear how Newton is always extolled, how you can't say science is wrong because Newton was wrong or gravity doesn't exist because Newton invented it and then he was wrong. So Einstein may be wrong. And the reason is because Newton maps it as a force. Whereas we know in our reality, it definitely is not a force as far as we know. So, so Newton's model, let's say of gravity if we're going to use globe card criteria, doesn't matter whether it necessarily relates to ours or not. The only thing that matters is how accurately it describes ours, not how okay, accurately. So, so it what was it. in this list? You you put how closely the model matches reality as last. What was it that you put first again? So the most important one is uh, the future scope of the model the if future, the trajectories like continue. Because how like much future, is it going to offer? Future predictions. Yeah. So, like, if the yeah. model continued on the path it's on, how what what could it benefit us with? What could it give us? I mean, is it going to uh, solve the fundamental questions to reality, or is it just going to help us like figure out a bit more about earthquakes? 
Um, the one before that is how much of the model has how much is it naturally organically expanded, you know, without meaning to showing how much it's in touch with reality and has it solved questions that it didn't set out to solve. And that would show how valid it is. For example, Einstein's um, theory of relativity, for example, I don't know if this is true, didn't set out to solve the three body problem, but by virtue of being so in touch with reality, it then solved the three body problem without meaning to, without intending to. No. And then the one before. Didn't, the one, didn't do that. I don't know if that's but, true. I'm giving an example. Okay. So you get my idea. And then the one before that is can it make observations that are testable? Can it explain things? Can it make predictions in the past and in the future? Um, and can it make predictions in the fields that are dealing with it, such so like seismology? Can you blow theory to make predictions? But globe theory as well can also predict things just as a model, i.e. Um, the length of a day, determining how long it takes to rotate because it's an orb. Um, and then before that, there's not really much stuff. But the first one is, is one position arbitrary and the other not? So reality is a scale with extremes, say like a book. Uh, all the pages in the book would be arbitrary except the first and the last. Page seven would have some pages in front of it and more after it. And that would be distinct from page 12, which would have maybe less after it, but more in front. But that, that's a distinction. There's no fundamental difference. Whereas the first and the last pages are distinct and different because they either have nothing in front of them or behind them. So if I can show that your position is arbitrary, whereas mine lies on an extreme, then all I have to show, or closer to an extreme, then all I have to show after that is my um, my pers perspective lies more lies along the correct extreme, and I'm going to do that by fulfilling the criteria that I set. Okay, is that? I hope that's it. That's it. So we can start. Yes. Excellent. All right. Well, um, all right. Go go ahead. Okay, well, can you present first? Because my first thing is to oh. show that your position's arbitrary. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, it will be five minutes, and then the whole rest of it is positive evidence with citations and references and stuff. Um, so if you could just give me that one thing, then after sure, that first round, sure. I'll let you take the lead, and you can do it whatever order you want. Um, yeah, well, all right. I... Well, uh, what shall I do? Uh, oh, there's, there's, there's options. I'm just, I'm just trying to pick one after, after all that stuff. You're what? I do, how, I'm not used to this phone. How do I um, mute YouTube? Oh, you he you're hearing YouTube? Oh, it's... I want to see the chat while I'm doing it. The cat. The chat. Oh, the chat. Yeah. Oh, if if you're on, iPhone. if you're on your phone, it might be a little difficult to see the chat and do Zoom at the same time. Oh, I I can see it. I'm on it now. I just want to turn oh. off the sound. Oh, okay. I I I've never Is done. You probably can mute the sound on YouTube. That's what your, I thought. But yeah, no but I I've never done what you're trying to do, so I can only. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Do you want to start presenting? Sure. Sure. Uh. Well, and I'm, I'm trying to take in your your uh. Your, your the stuff you were saying there, just to make sure that what I what I do is uh. Should I say it really uh, quickly again? No. Okay. Definitely, <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> uh. I like to be precise. I'm well. Yeah. Of... I mean, you 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 want you want. Let me, let me you said that the the best one was that it makes future predictions right no the best one is it solved problems it didn't set out to solve it's so in touch with reality that it was able to answer questions it didn't even know existed uh, and the one before that was to be able to make predictions with it the fields that work with it and also as a model in its own right Okay. 
and then and then the last most important <laughs> one is its potential in the future future potential yeah, all right well i will i will then uh, i'll just say that um i'll, I'll grab it here um, yeah You can make your own criterion in the free part of the no, debate. No, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy to to use you. So I, I'll yes. I'll, uh, I'll say now. Now, was there last uh, over the last couple of hours here, twelve hours ago, an eclipse anywhere? Any what? An eclipse. Eclipse of what? An eclipse. Was there an eclipse anywhere? I don't think. I don't know. There was. There was. Okay. Uh, friend of mine in Israel sent me a picture of it uh, this morning. I have right here a book published before 2021. Cool. Right? On on the future yeah. eclipses. Okay. This is 10 years of future eclipses. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, we got a partial lunar eclipse. Oh, that's 2023. I'm just it was oh no it was this was it a solar eclipse wasn't it so let's grab that 2036 april 22 there it is look at this partial solar eclipse okay uh 2022 october 25th that that's today in fact and and it's it's path of visibility now i didn't look i didn't look for it because it's not where i could see it uh my friend mm -hmm. in israel let me just get israel on here who is uh, right in this vicinity near near the center of that he saw the eclipse himself and he sent me a photograph of it round thinker he has a youtube channel um okay. so before 2021 because that's the when this was published was before 2021 this was predicted the eclipse that was predicted was predicted using the globe using sure. um specifically elp 2000 is is the the eclipse model that predicts this yeah um and that that incorporates vsop 87 which is a model of the solar system of all the different uh positions of the the uh the planets the sun yeah the moon uh moons of other planets they're all they're all in vsop 87 so those those things together and that also incorporates then the the measured distance between the earth and the moon to get more accuracy and that was done because there's retro reflector reflectors that have been put on the moon and uh, they measure they measure the distance to the moon regularly so i will say that this right here mm -hmm. is evidence of of the earth being a globe because it was it used specifically the model of the globe mm -hmm. vsop 87 which was de de designed um to model where the planets are in three-dimensional space it did mm -hmm. not intend when they put it together to model the positions of the eclipses so vsop 87 did more than it set out to do by by also being able to predict where eclipses will be seen for how long will be seen uh on the specific time of day and the location on the sphere earth so there you go okay okay is that is that yours yes sure i i present now sure okay how do i screen share uh there should be somewhere in the screen should be a a thing that, that says share screen okay let's see just print some more. Right, and check meeting settings. Uh, I cannot see it. I've not used it on mobile very much, but other people have used yeah, it on mobile. And, and screen, and there we go. It. Yeah. Be recorded. Okay. Is it showing my screen? Not yet. Is it now? No, just just still your face there. Okay. Uh, it would probably you. I typically you. I think on mobile you have to go and choose what you're going to share before it's. Okay, there we go. What about that? 
no, still no. Oh, no. there we go. There it goes. There, we go. there it's starting. Cool. Okay, I haven't had a chance to organize them, but we'll see how it goes. So can you hold up your picture of the globe again? Uh, from, from here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, can you, you made predictions, but you didn't tell me about your globe model. Can you specifically tell me some measurements in the shape first? Some specific measurements of the of the radius of the globe? Globe. Well, I mean, in, I, I, gave, I, I referenced the specific measurements of the distance to the moon, uh, yeah. but the the distance, globe or, sorry. Yeah, the, the radius of the of the globe was measured in many ways. I did it myself, um, cool. but uh, you can- Can you uh, just tell me quickly? How, how I did it myself? No, what these measurements are. What these measurements are. The, what are they? What's the radius? The circumference is 24,000 miles. What's the yeah, the, the radius is, is just under 4,000 miles. Okay, circumference? About 24,000 miles or 40,000 kilometers. Okay, and it's, for all intents and purposes, a sphere. Yeah, slight, slightly uh, mushed at the top and bottom, so the, yeah. the polar radii is uh, smaller than the equatorial radius. Okay, so in reality... Um, your model is the globe model based off globe theory, um, and you've given me your measurements. Okay, this is also a picture of the globe. Now, these lines are invisible, uh, but they exist. As you can see, they come from the globe, they are attached to the globe, they are part of the globe. Um, why have these parts of the globe, our world, not been taken? And if you were a electron let's say or something that reacted to uh the ele electromagnetic um poles of our earth when coming to the earth what you would see what you would experience whatever from your how you interact from your perspective is you would interact with these lines that you can see in this artist's representation so why is your perspective real and this perspective isn't, or are they both real? And if this is also real, then your me your measurements must obviously change. Yes. Uh, those the electromagnetic field of the Earth doesn't greatly affect the physical dimensions of the Earth, but well, we can. But we can. If, if we can use it. What, I've got a compass right here. Yeah, but what yeah. what affects what interacts with the electromagnetic spectrum? Electrons. Uh. Electrons generally are not affected by the electromagnetic field. So what type of light would be? Well, l sorry, light light is not, sorry. Light is generally not affected by it because light is the, the uh, photons. Are yeah. The, uh, yeah, that's the... the um, no, the I'm not talking about visible light. Uh, I'm talking about different way, rays, like X-rays, gamma rays. Okay. The spectrum. So, do you? I, I can look it up. Do Do you know what interacts with with these things, with these electromagnetic lines? Magnets do. Magnets, but specifically what? I, I don't. Uh, know. Just, just you, just go ahead. I, I don't want to play twenty questions. Just go ahead. Well, I don't know. That's the thing. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm asking. Magnets. <laughs> what interacts with the electromagnetic field? Is that what you're typing? Yeah. Oh, with the poles? Yeah. Compasses. Compasses. Well, well, I don't know what you... Of, mm, uh, so... And those are... The, uh, they're, to be I thought, kind of... I thought, uh, no, to be this, specific... This those are not yeah. electromagnetic field lines. Those are magnetic field lines. Okay. Uh, all right. What waves interact with the Earth's magnetic field? Yeah, we go. What Every waves? day is a squeak bag. Solar wind. Okay. What solar? Okay. Oh, so if you're okay. So 
Is is that what uh, you're getting at? That the Van Halen belts? Uh, I, I guess it could be. Does it affect radio waves? Generally, no. Generally, no. Uh, it, but it, it does uh, of a tenu, a tenu, radio waves of attenuation band frequencies. So let's say you were solar wind. I'm guessing there's a lot more of that than people in the universe. If you were cer certain waves on, on the spectrum, the electromagnetic spectrum, like radio waves, um, you, you would interact with it. So the Earth, according to you, uh, as, as an electromagnetic, uh, as one of those things, would be this. And when you are interacting with the Earth, you'd be interacting with this. So this would be measured as part of your perspective of, in reality, what the Earth is. Here's another one. If we took all the water on the earth and put it together and we actually made it ice um, and ice would be, I, I think, bigger than water. Ice has a larger volume than water. Does it? I believe so. Yes. If you have one mole of yep. water liquid and one mole of uh, ice, then the, ice. The, the ice is slightly larger in volume. Okay. So if we can hypothetically imagine this happened right now. But uh, that water turned to ice, you would then, and it was a cube, you would then have a huge solid cube with volume attached to the earth. And that would clearly make it a far less regular shape than it was and would affect the measurements. So in reality, this earth would have different measurements to yours, even though it's real. That's no, 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 that, that's not real though. No, no, but I'm talking that's hypothetically. Just, that's just an yeah. idea. Yeah, but, hypothetically but, but is the opposite of real, right? It's not yeah. real. By definition, I, it's not real. The, the, the point I'm trying to get across is I'm going to show your 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 thing is argue, uh, arbitrary. Your position is arbitrary. There are other measurements for the globe that really exist or can be imagined feasibly to exist that would change your measurements and even maybe not make it a globe. This, for example, is uh, how neutrinos, uh, of which there's, I don't know, so many more going through your hand right now than humans that have ever existed. This is how they'd see the Earth. Um, not even sure if they'd see it as a solid, but those bits are like nuclear reactors or extra nuclear material. They'd see those as solid, uh, but not or the other do, bits. Do you, do you mean that that would be the source of neutrinos on the Earth if they were... No, if you had a no. neutrino detector outside the Earth? No, neutrinos coming through the Earth, apparently, according to CERN, would see the Earth like this. Yeah, that's if neutrinos that's came through the Earth, yeah. So, so there would be ar areas that the neutrinos would, would experience a little more likelihood of interacting? Is that, is that yeah, what you're well, saying? Yeah, because, because most of them actually do not interact at all. The vast majority of them, uh, like yeah. I think it's over ninety nine percent, pass through the Earth with nothing there. So this yeah. this green stuff, it's just it's not actually there. It's to show you the just the shape, a reference, but it's not actually there. It would actually only measure the Earth those bright yellow points, not even making it a sphere at all and having different dimensions. And that's real. That's a real perspective. Neutrinos exist. Um, so where's the good? Uh, this, so we're talking about what's really there, what's not. This is the same star, but just with the same thing, but just with a filter put around it. So, so far we've shown your perspective is arbitrary because it doesn't me uh, measure the real shape because the shape is arbitrary. We're showing that uh, mass is arbitrary because of neutrinos we're showing here in terms of visually what we can see in the visual light spectrum is arbitrary so, so just to, to be clear this is is this your presentation of evidence for flat earth or is this your refutation of my evidence the, this this is the very first bit this is just my refutation and then i go on to present positive evidence okay but how, how, none of but, this actually but, is addressing what i brought up it's addressing that your perspective, your because we're talking about reality here. Okay? okay. So in reality, I'm not refuting that your measurements are accurate and real. What I'm what I'm refuting is when we're talking about reality, yours are the most viable or best or strongest perception of reality. I'm showing it's not, it's an arbitrary perspective of reality. 
that is distinct from other perspectives, but it, there's no difference. On the scale, it doesn't lie near an extreme, near an absolute reality. It lies in the middle, it's arbitrary. So for example, if we look at this down at the bottom, that's gamma rays. Uh, gamma rays, I believe, are short wave uh, or short frequency. Um, so yes, and, they, and an excellent band. An excellent band. So when they interact with the Earth, they actually begin interacting from the atmosphere. So now, even if you do measure the sphere, the dimensions of the sphere are bigger. So this is arbitrary. We have X-rays there. I'm not sure how accurate that is, but we have X-rays. There's your Earth. This is ultraviolet um, light. So it wouldn't, again, look like an orb. Um, so that's to show your perspective is arbitrary. Now, I am going to show my perspective, and this may be the first accurate, even though hypothetical, flat Earth map that has ever been presented. Here is one representation of it. That is hypothetically, in my model, the real world, hypothetically, as you'll come to see. Um, and just to make it easier for everybody to reference, as we're arguing, this, uh, this is another hypothetical map. These dimensions, hypothetically, one of, one of the measurements of that, if it was true hypothetically, would, if we measure the Earth in arbitrary units, let's say X units, uh, and the Earth has a surface area of 510 X units, then one of the measurements for flat Earth in reality would be 40 X units and the area would be 127.5 X units. Okay, so my perspective is, uh, the model I am using is the flat Earth model or the holographic model. The holographic model states, I'll bring it up for you. I think PJC Net's gonna be a fan of this one. Is that? Oh, he's he's a flat earther. That's uh, I think I think this holographic stuff is right up his alley. Is it? Okay. We'll see. So... PJ, PJ, let let it, give us your thoughts. Oh, he gave a lol for you so far. <laughs> has he uh, tried it before? Uh, I think PJ has tried everything before, and not to and his great. What benefit. was the response to this one? <laughs> so, so basically. Um, Leonard Susskind, um, the godfather of the holographic principle and a world famous scientist, said the three dimensional world of ordinary experience, the universe filled with galaxies, stars, planets, houses, boulders and people is a hologram, an image of a reality coded on a distant two dimensional surface. So as we can see here, I've fulfilled the first two criteria. Um, I've shown your model is arbitrary, whereas mine, my model of the universe, the flat model or the holographic model would encompass your perspective, but also show the actual reality, the underlying reality, which you will come to see is the source of the reality that we experience now, making my perspective far less arbitrary. And for the second criteria, I can encompass all of your perspective. I can encompass 100% of the globe model in mine while doing more, whereas the globe model can only encompass a tiny fraction of my model. So can, can, my so can we can we test this then? How how does yours, yeah. uh, for example, how does your flat Earth model predict eclipses? Well, I mean, without being rude, because it does encompass the globe model, at the moment, and you'll see the story of this as it develops, but I don't think scientists would really use it to predict that just because it wouldn't be important enough. They'd have far more important things to do with this model um, and far more wide ranging things. So what they'd probably do is they'd just probably leave the globe model as it is in terms of navigational um, purposes, you know, seismic stuff, um, you know, yeah, so so, so things, use the things, globe things. to do all the real work and then use your flat earth well, model no, for no, what? No, the real work would be done by the holographic principle. Uh, uh, both work would be real from both models, but in terms of which is more important, 
which is more fundamental, which is more far reaching, which is more useful, um, it will be the flat earth model. It will be the holographic model. So, all right. Um, so, all right. So then to be clear, so what, what, like, give me an example, something more useful than predicting when the next eclipse is going to be seen that, that, okay. your, that your flat earth model does. So then let's, okay. let's like, let's go well, through, the, well, we, let's work through one of these examples. Sure. So again, it's my first debate. I had this picture differently, so I'm, I'm going to have to reorganize my thoughts. Okay. But, um, but uh, basically, the first thing I expected you to do, which actually I spent most of my time on, was because I did see a debate about this a couple of years ago. It may or may not have been on your channel, but it was with PhD Tony. Somebody invited him in to help. And he said, no, the holographic principle and the holographic model, it's not actually a model of the universe. What it is, is it's more like a library to translate between like um, conformal field theories and like string theory and stuff. That's what I thought your first argument would be. But you accept it is a model of the universe. Uh, well, I, I accept that you claim it's a model. I've, I'm just looking yeah. for, I'm just trying to apply your, like your principles that I wrote down here. So like- mm. um, I've done the first one. Uh, future future predictions, so right? Does it, does, it, does it do more than it set out? So, so far, I haven't seen what it, does right does it do more than it set out to do i haven't seen one of the things so that I'll, it I'll does work, yet right sure so so i'll work out i'll work it through in the order i had planned then which is the order of the criteria um so the first thing is what was its intended purpose and did it achieve it well its intended purpose was to solve the uh, the paradox, the conflict between the first law of thermodynamics, which says in a closed system, which the universe is presumed to be the only one, um, energy cannot be created or destroyed. Okay. Um, uh, so it's between the first law of thermodynamics and uh, quantum theory. Um, quantum well, theory, do, do you need me to explain this? Or, or well, yeah, what? go ahead and explain the, the claimed uh, contradiction. Okay, so the contradiction was quantum field theory um, states that quantum theory states that uh, information um, in terms of thermodynamics is mapped exactly like energy. It's indistinguishable. It obeys all the laws of energy. So um, it cannot be created or destroyed in the universe. It can be changed. It can be moved around. It can't be created or destroyed exactly like energy. Now, what Stephen Hawkins found out in about the 70s when he was doing his thing on black hole radiation was he realized that um, mass or systems going into a black hole would increase the volume of the black hole in direct proportion, a one-to-one -one proportion, let's say, with the mass that went into it. But let's say a, ball, a, a, a room was going in with balls and these balls weren't in motion. The room would go in, the volume of the black hole would increase proportional to the room. Great. But he also realized that if that room was going in and the balls were in motion, bouncing around, so they had velocity, they had position, there was temperature in the room, etc. all this information, when it went into the black hole, it would only increase the volume of the black hole um, proportional to the mass that went in. It wouldn't increase it at all proportional to the energy. So... Basically, what this meant was that this information, which quantum theory claims is exactly the same as energy, was either lost or destroyed. So either quantum theory was wrong, first law of thermodynamics was wrong, or something was missing. Now, okay. Suskin, and some, now Suskin and somebody else realized that if the world was holographic, if the holographic principle was, let's say, true, and reality was coming from a lower flat two-dimensional reality and being projected, let's say, onto a three-dimensional reality, our world with time as the four, three spatial dimensions, then, then this could be solved. How did they solve it? Well, they realized that when systems in motion went into a black hole, even though the volume only increased in proportion to the mass, the surface area, increased in proportion to the total energy of the system. Uh, and what they figured out was that for a black hole, 
um, the total energy or information of any system going into a black hole could be mapped at an area no less than the surface area of the black hole or the surface area increase of the black hole, okay? So that's how the holographic principle came to be. Um, so that's what it set out to do. That's all it set out to do. For, since then, it has um, create been the fundament one, the fundamental thing in creating mobile phones. Uh, I really wish I was organised here. My I, I'm I'm not seeing how any of this actually is a useful mechanism to make predictions of the future or. Uh, I'm, I'm do do more I'm than the model. Like so far, this is the there's it's you've not given a single example of what your model can do. Yeah. Um, well, that's what it did. It solved that paradox. That's the first thing it did. Um, and secondly, how did it solve that? By realizing it was a surface area that increased, and and the mechanism they gave um, for basically reality being 2D and shadow indistin uh, indistinct reality being 3D was they said that um, a particle going in would leave its information on the surface area, sort of smear it. And then when the black hole started to disappear through Hawking radiation, particles that were basically created out of nowhere on the event horizon and then went out, reducing the volume of the black hole, that, that particle would sort of smear up against the event horizon and take the information back into the universe thus nothing was uh lost no energy was created or destroyed uh, all right so, so fine uh, I, I don't i don't see how the, any of this relates so far and and all of this okay is so here, here here is some i've got to find off more because... off topic of what we're of the shape of the earth yeah so far okay right so there, there's like four pages of this. I didn't look at it all, but... Um, this isn't the place to present it. So it, it, it's, right? under, it's... Okay, so some of the things it's already done is uncovered a tight relationship between Vasilev's esoteric equations describing interactions of higher spin but, and the but, physics of large N CERN semicoupled couple Kel, days. Kelbeta, Kelbeta, hold, none but, of this is, is, is addressing how you think the Earth is flat. Because this is if this is reality, then reality is flat. So in reality, the Earth will exist. Wait, wait, in wait, reality, wait. that that was flat. a non that was a non sequitur though. But you've made it a non sequitur because I haven't followed the scope that I thought this debate would go on. So you're missing a lot of information. <laughs> you, you thought you should have sent me the script you wanted me to follow ahead of time. Well, I've never done this before. It's a lot <laughs> different watching it to actually doing it. Here's the reality. <laughs> That we yeah. don't actually script these things, people. There, there's a guy <laughs> in the chat that's that uh, flat earther, I think that that's uh, talking smack on you. Um, mm. uh, I think I think he he's not buying that you're flat earther. I don't know. Um, it don't matter. Don't have to. He well, might be one of the those I, Illuminati definitely guys. Definitely, he's Illuminati. Clearview, yeah. you've been outed. Yeah, um, he probably is. There's a lot of them. They've okay, been in it for like five so, years now. So, so all right. But but none of this yet even begins to touch. Well, on, you're you're saying on, what has my model predicted, or what what value does my model have outside okay. of the thing that she set out to do related okay, to okay, reality? Okay, okay, I I get that. You could have made because it's not really on topic. You could have just kind of made a passing reference to. It. Let's 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 maybe get closer to what what the actual topic is the the actual shape sure. of the earth. How does your model? <laughs> Yeah. work in relation to the shape of the Earth? Okay, well, basically, my model talks about reality as we know it, i.e. the universe, and what reality, all of it, actually is, which is, in reality, flat and two-dimensional, and the Earth, being a tiny, tiny, tiny part of reality, will be included in the real two-dimensional reality, so that will make the Earth in reality, flat. Now, I can I can tell you what. Why... Wait, say, say that again. Just, just... Yeah. Okay. So the the uh, if reality, all of reality in our universe, is actually as Leonard Susskind says, as the quote I read you says, 
is two dimensional, that that's reality. And this thing that we live in is basically like a shadow. It's the projection of a reality. Then the earth, which is part of the universe, which all of it in reality is flat, will in reality be flat because it is part of the universe. All right. So it started with an if you haven't you haven't uh, s- substantiated the what came right after the if yet though. So yeah, I know that that's going to be. I was assuming that would be the first part of the argument. I I, w- I was assuming you'd say what PhD Tony said, which no, this is just an abstract tool used to solve equations. Uh-huh. But obviously, you you accept it already as a model. I, I, I'm I it it sure it is a model. Mm-hmm. And I, and then and then you know it's a hypothesis, so we test the hypothesis. Yes. And so I'm 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 just I don't I haven't yet figured out how this can even be tested. And if it's not testable, it what can. is it? If it's it not testable, tested. what is it? What is it? It's not science if it's not testable. Yeah, no, it it can be testable. Okay. And what, what, once once tested and verified, we would then be able to have accurate measurements of the flat earth within a margin margin of error but we don't have them right now for a very good reason oh christian and that very good yeah christian yeah christian was the one who said there's not a very good reason for not having them and i which was an assumption and i said there is a very good reason christian in the chat yeah last week oh okay (laughs) and the reason is it's the illuminati it's, isn't um, it no it's, it's not always the illuminati and no, sometimes the it's the french yeah. mimes though the illuminati doesn't get all the credit no sometimes the, the, it's the, the illuminati have been in, doing an incredibly good job in the flat earth what about up the he-man now. woman hater club <laughs> can't trust now, them at either least, at least in the flat at least in the last three years on all the major globe channels no flat earther has let alone had a win, let alone a draw. No flat earther I've checked, and as far as I've checked, has up to now even presented one piece of positive evidence that has survived through today that hasn't been refuted. I cannot not disagree with you. I, I, well done. I, I totally yeah. agree. Yeah. Not a single piece. So for three years, the highest we have ever achieved is abject, humiliating, consecutive defeat. Right, that's the best. The worst. Well, you are, is... you are, you have nailed it. Yes, Ooh. thank you very much. Yeah. you're, you're too kind, though. You're too kind. No, no. But okay. the, the worst we've achieved is that. Plus, we've lost even more ground to the globe. Okay, so in order for me to achieve a success of infinite magnitude greater than anything so far achieved, at least in the past three years, which I've checked, all I have to do is provide one piece of positive evidence that for flat earth, which is not refuted. If I can do that, I have achieved infinitely more than any flat earth up to date because zero times infinity is zero. So more than infinitely more. Yeah, yeah, d- double infinity. Double infinity, All exactly. Right. And there's a reason flat earthers have done so bad over the last three years. And that's due to the Illuminati infiltration right up to the leadership, especially the leadership. So, so the leadership, like, like maybe Anthony Riley, for example, he's, he's in the Illuminati. No, he, they're, they're not Illuminati. They're, they're, they'll have gone from shills all the way up to double O globe holes, double O earth girth, whatever. They're, they'll have raised all the way up. But it's basically, don't you yep. think it's... W, double double O globe holes? Yeah. Is this like, is is this like MI6? This is like this is like MI6 for non-illuminati operators. Is it, is it operate Brigade, Brigade 77? They well, they all have different names. One is Globe Hole, one is Earth Girth. They all have different ones. Is it, is it Knights Templar? No, no, is these it, guys are not Illuminati and they'll never be Illuminati. They're is working it, for the Illuminati. Oh, really. is it oh like the operation of strategic influence? I've never seen that, but that's Ooh. what it is. You should look you should yeah, look that one up. Okay. But um, um you you'll be surprised because because uh Globers, hopefully I'll be able to tell you at the end if I get permission, Globers have been tricked as well. It's not just flat earthers, Globers have been tricked by them as well. 
And I can prove this with just their own logic, their own fact check, their own facts, and objectively verifiable independent data points. You only have to make one assumption, and the only assumption you have to make to see it all is that they are only slightly smarter than they appear to be. And there's very good evidence for that, which I may be able to give at the end. All right. Well, I, I hope you get the green light to uh, to do that. I hope so yeah. too. But I mean, you know, a win and, or a draw would be completely unthinkable. But if I can provide one pr piece of positive evidence that hasn't been debunked, I will have achieved more than infinitely more than any flat earth today. Okay, on a respected globe channel. So. Shall I just, uh, so basically, that's what it says. So now do you understand why, in terms of this debate, my model is winning? Because it would encompass I, I, all of yours. And I mean, more. You've, you've said it encompasses it, but you haven't shown how it does that yet. Well, I started reading stuff off, like the stuff that it's already done, let alone the stuff it will do. But, but it, part of what I wanted just, to do is... Just claim so far. Well, I'm showing you. You can see my screen. I'm showing you these scientifically peer-reviewed papers but, that you but can which look of at. Them, but which of them say that the Earth is flat or include flat Earth in it or uh, measurements no, the, of the, 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 the shape the, of the Earth? The, the, the main axiom of it is that reality is flat. Now, unless you're claiming the Earth isn't part of reality, the Earth will also be flat. Sh should the we call up Leonard Susskind and see what he thinks? Well, he said what he thinks, at least one of the things he thinks. And there's other people, um, such as Juan Maldacena. Uh, he's widely regarded as the greatest physicist of his generation. Uh, he still works in this field. He was the one who made the first full model of a holographic universe um, to be able to be used. Um, and when commenting on a experiment, I've got another experiment that he commented on which shows a very similar thing. And I've got evidence of the same type of experiment he was commenting on, but haven't been able to find the original article with the specific experiment attached with the co comment, but hopefully you'll take it on good faith that I have it, especially after you see the rest of my evidence. Um, he said- There's, there's um, more. Oh, there's loads more. He, he said, there's so much more. We haven't even started. He said, that this experiment, which I good believe thing. was good to thing do, I've got my tune shine, <laughs> which, which I believe was to do with quark gluon plasma, working with a string theorist, um, showed that real life matter in our universe, when placed into the holographic model, the flat Earth model, even though it's of a universe that's not our own because they can't create one of our own yet, um, was shown to be. Um, perfectly you know projected it was shown to be the equations were done separately one on the flat boundary one on the um, higher dimensional space time um, and the result of each solved equation both equations were solved independently in the exact way it needed to be in order for in that universe which is very close to our own in the ways that matter in order for it to be transported holographically so our matter is susceptible to holographic transportation and i've got other things here that show the same thing but it's to do with electron entanglement um, and he said that was very strong evidence to suggest that our, our, our universe could possibly Oh, be okay. a holographic universe okay so, so, oh, just, so just to be clear somebody good. saying that 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 a a mathematical transformation could be could could be strong evidence for something is there any empirical evidence for these things well you see to, may, may, may i just then continue with the way that I wanted to do it and then you'll understand all this because you're asking oh. all the questions that I, uh, I answered anyway. Oh, okay. Um. Okay. So, um, first off, um, we, uh, the, this holographic principle was changed into a model. Um, it's called um, ADS-CFT model, which stands for anti-de-sitter 
uh, space time and uh, conformal. In the middle of that boundary is a higher dimensional universe. He made the f- he made the first full complete model of this. What this was initially used for was just an easier way to solve equations um, in quantum theory with, um, without having to worry about space time. Because one of the problems with quantum theory is it only includes three fields. It doesn't include the gravitational field. Now, even though string theory does include the gravitational field, it only does so in a way that can represent it. It still uses the equations of general relativity just as quantum field does when trying to solve, when trying to solve equations. But this method of doing it um, basically makes you can solve the uh, conformal th- field theory equations without gravity, which makes it a lot easier. And then you can project this reality into the higher dimensional reality, which then shows the effects of gravity. And then you can translate it back to our universe. So th- it's a way to solve it easier. So he did that, but it was just used as a tool. It, uh, it was an abstract model dealing yeah. with the abstract aspect of our reality the abstract aspect of our reality is maths it's the language in which the universe speaks but it's abstract. yeah i mean it, yeah it's, it's it sounds like it's just a a, a very nice coordinate transform yeah and that's yeah. what initially it was okay um but it was based on the holographic principle and that's what initially it was um people then went on to um show that the model itself and I'll find you, because I want to show you the evidence. Um, Okay, so for example, this one. This is, as I'm not sure if it relates to black hole in our universe, but let's just say it doesn't. It it relates um, to a a black hole in a different universe? Well, let's just say, because that's the easiest one that you're not going to argue with. Um, So it showed that um, in these model universes, these holographic universes that consist of a lower dimensional reality projected onto higher dimensions. It could be eight dimensional reality, whatever. And it's just, on anti just, just go with eight, yeah. yeah, not not our space time. It's on a different type of space time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It it showed that within this universe, one of these hypothetical universes, a a certain type of black hole could cre- be created on the higher dimensional space. It could exist in that universe. That's a potential thing that really could exist in this hypothetical universe if it was real. What these guys then show showed is that this black hole, um, let me just say their words. Now, um, now the problem is, so yeah, maybe, what, what, maybe we don't, maybe we could skip past the, the, just the hypothetical stuff and move forward okay. towards the but, empirical but, but, stuff. Okay, so basically he showed that a hypothetical universe, which is holographic, is, is plausible. It mathematically can work. What, what then went on to show, taking real matter from our universe, you could solve it in these hypothetical universes in a way that was experimentally testable. Do you need me to find the paper that shows this? No, I don't really care. I'm, I'm okay, looking for the empirical like, evidence here. Okay, not, well, that, not that, the coordinate that, transforms and the hypothetical stuff. Okay, okay no, no, but it's taking yeah. it's using the model to take real stuff from our universe and showing that this model works in order to solve it and make predictions in a, in a different but, universe that we can't yeah, test. Yeah, but the, yeah. the universe, the universe is because the conjecture is that in the ways that it matters. The ADS CFT thing is exactly equivalent in the ways that it matters to our universe. Okay, now, now that conjecture it made in the 90s, mathematically unproven, just like the equivalency principle, just like the speed of light in a vacuum being the fastest thing at the time of Einstein. Unproven, it's a conjecture, but they, they took, at, they took at it. At the time, the it was. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No. I mean, yeah, there's a lot. Of, there's, well, I, I think I, I don't. I think even with Einstein's time, they they had a pretty good uh, measurement for no, it. No, but they, they, they Mor- morally, um, um, Mickelson. Sorry, is Albert Mickelson that uh, I think got the Nobel Prize for being the the one to measure the speed of light, right? Yeah, but but to yeah. prove it as the fastest thing in a vacuum, which is one of the two fundamental things. Einstein worked off for his theory of relativity, that and the principle of equivalency, which was unproven mathematically. 
um, was a conjecture at that time. Yeah, at that time. Just like this, yeah. just, just like this correspondence is mathematically still a conjecture, but it seems to really work. Well, so, it doesn't seem to work because you haven't yet cited any empirical evidence for it, right? Well, I've, I've, I've just told just you like what, what are what are the experiments that were done to confirm this was correct? Because I can list I off the experiments that it, Einstein the papers, and you said just, no. I asked you, do you want to see the papers showing I, what I'm saying is true? And you said no. I, oh, I want the I want the papers for the empirical tests of this. Well, empirically, they showed you could take real matter. Put it in this in the mo the holographic model. That's not empirical. That's hypothetical. That's no, hypothetical. they did do that. They, they did do that. They, they took matter and they put it into a different universe to test it. They put it into a, a model of our universe, right? But Wait, this you, model you can't, you can't put matter into a model. Okay, that's actually so reification. Okay, okay, okay. But you know what? You know what I'm trying to say. Okay. They, they I, show I that, don't act. I don't want to be mean. I, I don't actually know what you're trying to say. Okay. But maybe if I have more of this. Yeah. So the holographic model, right, of our universe is not close enough yet to represent our universe exactly in terms of dimensions and everything. I There's agree. a good reason for that. The reason for that is in order to be able to do so, even just to make one with the same dimensions, we first have to figure out the way to make a sphere of infinite radius, which no one's figured out yet, but they believe they can. And secondly, even if you did that, we probably still couldn't make the exact model of our universe until uh, we had a, th a theory of quantum gravity in our universe. Once we have the theory of quantum gravity in our universe, we can then make the model precise, far more precise, because it's still a model of our universe, it's just not very accurate. It looks like other ones. It's pretty we accurate. Make it. I mean, I, yeah, yeah. I can. It's I, pretty accurate. We, yeah, we, we know. Really we know how long a plane's going to take to get between locations and how much fuel they need to load into it. Yes. Yeah. But I mean, you don't know the sequence of quark gluon plasma, for example. The holographic model does. It doesn't doesn't but, really doesn't really matter when you're just jumping in a plane and flying and you need to know how much fuel yeah. to put in. No, but it do, right. it does if you're talking about quark gluon plasma. <laughs> Uh, but we're not talking, but that's not the topic. The topic is the no, shape of the earth, plane. not quark yeah. gluon plasma. I mean, that's a fantastic topic that that uh, that I would love to learn all sorts of I, things about, but it's I, really not okay. pertinent to the shape of the earth. So, okay, so so the earth is included in, in all of this. So basically, it showed that matter in our universe can be solved in this. It shows um, the Hy idea hypo of the hypothetically. Yeah, you can you can yeah. do coordinate transforms and. No, no, you, you can, you can, yeah, you, Things, you can basically yeah. get, uh, you can get results that can be testable in reality in a lab that will be accurate. I can show you the paper for it. That, yeah, uh, oh, yeah, that, that, that they did do tests. They, they did, did test in a lab. They did. This is what I'm showing you. Okay. Mm. Uh, we model in this paper. We model. Okay. I review the okay. holographic theory. Uh, This is all interesting stuff, but, but yeah, isn't I mean, it? it's it's definitely not talking about you know well, the, earth, the, earth, for the, the shape of the, the earth. The earth is really too small a subject for them to deal with, but it is included, and they could do it if they want. But um, so uh. that's talking about how you can solve black holes. Renormalizing. Okay, so this is some of the thing. This is four papers. I've only got. But maps but of two. gluon plasma. Okay, so nevertheless, the last several years we've seen considerable success in the application of the ads correspondent to the study of real world strongly coupled systems, in particular uh, quark gluon plasma. Uh, the successful application hinges on the belief that da -da -da is thought to be similar to this plasma analysis of scattering amplitudes. So it's seeing how it's taking real matter and real phenomena in our world using the holographic model of our world, even though admittedly it's not very accurate at all and should not work at all, but it's so in touch with the fundamental basis of our reality, this holographic model, that they can, they can get results from it that are accurate and testable. So that's the first thing. The second thing is after that, they showed that matter in our universe is able to be 
is, you know, what's the word? It is able to be um, transmitted holographically in in the in the holographic model of our of our universe, even though the holographic model is still quite inaccurate right now. Now, all of the holographic models at this point, you could say, well, yeah, but it uses anti de Sitter space time. We don't have anti de Sitter space time. Problem. So, yeah, it's a problem. But they checked that one out. Um, so, Ooh, that wait, go back one. Go back two. What, there? Go back two. Right there. Oh, that's awesome. That, that's yeah. my favorite part so far. <laughs> that's my night. Uh -huh. um, right. But, but um, so, sorry, can you just remind me of of what I'm looking for? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, empirical evidence, like I had. <laughs> yeah. You know, like like the ability to make predictions about when the next eclipse will happen based on a model. Yeah, that yeah, they they can clearly do that. If, if if they're talking about reality and they can do all this, they can clearly do that. But whereas your model can't do this, but they're clearly not interested in it because. <laughs> but 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 actually, the, I mean, so far none of this stuff yet that you've shown is empirical. It's uh, so far only been hypothetical, no, as far as I can empirical. tell. No, it, it shows empirically the holographic model of our universe. Can no, no, take that's hypothetically. That's that's. You, that matches the definition no. of hypothetical. Empirical means you 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 know you did a you did an experiment or something. They did these experiments in they reality. Just it out to me. In reality, in a reality, physical experiment they did in reality. These experiments. They did, they used this model, this holographic model, got results and did experiments that I have just read to you. What experiment? I just read it to you. There's lots of them, but I just read it to you. Did you not? Were you not listening? Or I, I was, but it. But I didn't hear any part that was talking about empirical stuff. I just showed it to you. Wait, go back to that bit. Your knight again. That knight's yeah, awesome. Yeah, he he's really cool. I'm level thirty six now, I think. Um, <laughs> okay, at, at least so I, you one could. Second, one second. You, you you passed by level thirty three already. I see. Uh, I'm not into all that. I think that is a distraction from the Illuminati guys. Um, what do you think? Like, if the Ma the Freemasons of the Illuminati met in a back alley, they would rumble. No, I, I think they say so. Here is just one of many. Um, nevertheless, the last several years we've seen considerable success in the application of the holographic model to the study of the real world, strongly coupled systems. In particular, real world actual quark gluon plasma. The successful application hinges on the belief that this is thought to be qualitatively very similar. To, to the model. Real life plasma is meant to be qual qualitatively similar um, to, I uh, know the real life universe is meant to be qualitatively similar to this model. The analysis of scaffolding antitudes in the ADS black hole ground, so they take real black holes and put them in ADS, led to the universal viscosity bound, which played an important role in understanding the physics of the electric flow. So not only has it taken done testable results that were accurate on physical phenomena but as i'm even going to show even more it's also uh, successfully let, let me see if more. i understand this if i understand this yeah. the, they used they use a coordinate transform the i think is is just kind of generally what i'm calling this holographic thing uh they used a coordinate transform to to in, in there as one of the tools to make predictions about things no, so they, they, they take our, the equations in our real world through like quantum theory and string theory, they take them and they put them in this model. They then solve them in this model, right? It either just getting the answer or solve them in the exact way independently, which shows that the higher dimension representation of this actual matter can come from the lower dimension. It actually can be translated that way and formed that way because the two equations match, even though they're different, they match in the exact way they need to for it to be transported holographically in the uh, holographic model of our universe, which admittedly is still well far off and shouldn't work at all, but because it's so fundamentally in touch with reality, it does. They then took, the, they after they'd solved it, they then translated it back into 
our world because the model isn't accurate enough to have the same dimensions of space time. So they have to translate it from the models to ours. And then they tested those predictions and they were successful. They also made general predictions about things in particular, limits to certain things that turned out to be true and turned out to provide real world solutions to real life problems in these real life fields. Uh, so our matter is subject to being able to transport holographically in a holographic universe, which is shown to be a viable concept anyway. And these models, they are of our universe, but because we can't make one yet, because we haven't got a theory for quantum gravity, the model is admittedly, it doesn't look the same thing. It's, it's almost as far wrong as Newton saying gravity was a force. But in terms of accurately explaining everything, the model does this as well. What else does it do? Well, it's taken seriously as a model because as you'll be able to see if you go on Wikipedia and scroll to the bottom, um, very high level scientists, as soon as this first correspondence was made and something very interesting was found out about this correspondence, they rushed out, tried to be the first to prove it. In fact, the head of CERN in America was so, you know, worked up about being the very first one to prove this and make this discovery, despite the fact you still to this day cannot make a viable experiment because we don't have a theory of quantum gravity. We don't know how to make an experiment, what to test for. Um, he went out and he tested that. You can see that at the bottom of Wikipedia. Now his <laughs> hypothetical, his, his experiment was actually formulated on something that broke Lorenz invariance. So it couldn't be viable anyway. Lorenz would be so mad. But I mean, that's 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 the Lorenz invariance is the principle of objectivity. If you don't, that says even in relativity, two observers doing an experiment, even though they relatively see it very differently, will have the same objective outcome. That's Lorenz invariance. He broke it. Okay. Um, all right. So, all right. All right. All right. We, we okay. got <laughs> yeah, so, you, so it. You've said many words. Yeah, because those you've said many words. Now we're getting to the strong bit. Now oh, we're getting to the strong, bit. Getting the strong okay. bit now. Okay. Yeah, the model. So first, oh, um, okay. people have identified and tested for uh, with, with precise positive re results, phenomena, observable phenomena in our universe, which they have shown to be completely viable to be um, coming from a lower dimensional holographic reality. If you want to read this, this is one of the experiments. Um, so we prefer, uh, in this paper, we try to understand things as if the visible universe were a reading of a lower dimensional hologram generated in hyperspace. We claim that the fuzziness in quantum mechanics and statistical mechanics and thermodynamics is due to the fact that we do not see the real image of an object, but holographic projection of it. We found that the projection of a point particle, th this indicates that holography could be the origin of the wave nature of a particle. Da, 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 da. So there's okay. one experiment like that. There's can I, others. Can, can I just just to just to yeah, that's yeah. Because it might because I think this might uh, be pertinent to you. PhD Tony, who you mentioned before, says that the central problem here is that two dimensional surfaces are not necessarily flat. The surfaces of spheres or any other solid are not flat. Two dimensional and flat are not synonyms. So right here, I have a what? sphere. What, what, right what, on this. Hold on, hold on. But I, I yeah. gave you a lot of words, man. You got a oh, lot of words right. out. All right. Yeah. Here's here's a sphere on the surface of the sphere. If we we just say that. Oh, well, that's north. We'll say this is north. Right. You have two directions. You can go north, south. That's yeah. one. Right. And you go, go east, west. The surface yeah. of this sphere is two dimensional, yet the sphere is not flat. Yeah. It's, so a hologram, okay. a hologram yeah. can be any number of dimensions it's not necessarily flat Sorry. planar okay I, I didn't say planar in, in my thing what i said is two-dimensional not occupying a three-dimensional space as opposed to three-dimensional shape which so, so, to, to, so to be clear um yeah it, it it is it is certainly closer to the earth is a globe to say that the that this is a two-dimensional shape in a sphere form, then uh, the Earth well, is a two-dimensional shape in a flat form, right? Uh, 
Well, it, if, I mean, you're taking a very specific definition of flat and then saying that's the only one. What, what I'm saying is, what, is flat but is flat, also... You. But flat earthers think that the earth is shaped like this. And so when, when somebody says flat earther, this is, this is the idea of flat but earth. But why, why do they think of it like that? They think of it like that because our leadership has been infiltrated going back over half a decade by the Illuminati who have used their agents to do what they've always done, which is to keep humanity away from the truth. And flat earthers being their biggest enemy, the ones that could harm them the most, they pay particular attention to. Don't you think it's weird that even though this principle has been mentioned before, and I read you the first page of Wikipedia, on the very first page, as soon as you open it up, what Leonard Susskind, a highly respected scientist, is quoted saying, the three-dimensional world of ordinary experience is filled with galaxy stars planet is actually a hologram, an image of reality coded on a distant two-dimensional surface. Okay. Okay. So, so, so that is, that is, that is that, it that, sounds that, to me like it's a hypothesis. Um, and, what? and so far I'm wondering how is this testable? It's testable once we have a theory of quantum gravity. So which... it's not, so it's not testable at this time. Well, if, if if it had been testable and proven true, it wouldn't be a it wouldn't be a hypothesis. Correct. It would be a theory. Yeah, but no, everybody we're not, knows yeah. there's no flat Earth theory. So of course, I, I agree. Yeah, but, um, but but not but a lot of flat Earthers think otherwise, right? But we we've, we've been controlled and influenced and brainwashed by the Illuminati for at least. I mean, you, half you've a said decade. that. You've said that. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, that's the first bit. So it's been shown to be viable, testable, accurate in that way. Now, there's also phenomena in our universe that have been identified as holographic uh, and, ha and have been shown I, to... I, 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 I played that video game. That ho <laughs> Remember that holographic video game where like you're a cowboy or something? Yeah. That was good. Yeah. So... That that's that's one thing. Um, again, I didn't have time to. So you're going to hate this source, but you'll find it elsewhere as well. Um, scientists, including I, have managed to show that the same mathematical conclusions to the holographic principle in a negatively work curved space, anti dissipative space time, work for a flat space too, which is our, what our universe is hypothesized to be, thus confirming that no laws are violated and no exotic spaces are required for our universe to be a holographic universe. So that's, that's very important. So it's stood up to every test it's come up against. It's far exceeded its boundaries massively. And there's no reason given, nor will you find any what, reason given. What test a holographic says it? What, are, you, are you asking the same thing? Are you asking... We haven't found quantum gravity. I mean, I don't know what you want me to yeah, say. So, yeah, so it's not testable. You don't have any empirical evidence for it. Not yet, but for good reason. If it was testable and we had empirical evidence, then it would so, be a theory. But you can't require a theory for a debate because everybody knows it's not a flat earth theory. So this is a moot point. This is outside the scope of this debate. It, it's, a, it's moot necessarily otherwise the debate's rigged and earth will always win well right yeah so uh, what, for, I mean, for a good reason no earth will always win in scientific papers until this becomes a theory but a debate where two people at the beginning have an equal chance to win and there's no stipulation which says one can't you have you have to straight away eradicate the fact that whatever anybody presents from the flat earth will not be a theory. And since if it had been tested and, and falsified, then I'd have no argument. If it had been tested and approved, then it would be a theory, but you know there's no flat earth theory. So the fact that it's a hypothesis in the framework of this debate, you can't use it. Otherwise you've got to admit every single debate has been rigged. I, I am perfectly fine knowing that every single debate's been rigged. Uh, it, you, you know, it's, I, I, I tell people all the time that I cheat. 
I make the other guy take this the factually go wrong position. Flat Earth, that, that the globe really are what flat earthers say they are from their own mouth. These debates were all rigged. Yes. I, I win coming into it because the earth is not flat. I've already yeah, so won. If, if you're going to count who wins, right? The earth is spherical. I cheat. I make the other guy take the side that's factually wrong. Okay, so you've admitted it then. So these yeah. debates, not, not, not only are they rigged, but they're very pernicious in the fact that you can already have your win in the realm of scientific papers. That realm already exists, and the standards that you're using to decide who would win in that realm are already applied. Yeah. And it's already yeah. there. So these debates are not only rigged, but they're perniciously rigged because you have a, sp a space where you can go and be right. Yeah. But you just want to at our expense. I mean, it's it's there's absolutely no intellectual integrity there. Yeah, that's fine. This is this is entertainment for intelligent people. Well, it's not really. I don't know how intelligent people who profess intellectual integrity can be entertained by something so obviously the opposite. That seems like entertainment for a very specific type of intelligent person. I, yeah. I, exclusive for most types. Yeah. Doesn't it? it? It does. It does seem. I mean. I mean. It does explain very well the the uh, one hundred percent success rate for all globe debates. Um, if if yeah, you're going it to, does, and it's yeah. not because flat Earth is wrong. The reason I mean, for the one hundred percent success, it is. Well, it's it's not because Australia was not the biggest island in the world before it was discovered, but in reality, it still was. Uh, actually, Greenland was. Greenland was, yeah. Before yeah. Australia was discovered. Yeah, Greenland is still the biggest island. Is it? Is it bigger than Australia? Are uh, you sure? I'm not sure that's true. Well, an Australian did uh, take take uh, umbran umbrance with your your uh, statement there. Well, let me see. Is that true? Because I might be factually incorrect, but it doesn't change the point. Um. So, you you are sharing. You, you yeah, are aware that Greenland. okay. So so um, so something else apart from Greenland, but 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 you're deliberately misleading it. So, something else apart from Greenland was the largest island in the world before Greenland was discovered. Can we agree on that? I mean, that's pretty good, wasn't it? Yeah, that did not help me. <laughs> but but um, that's beside the point. As intellectual people, I'm sure you understand. You could you could discern what I was saying. I I did get it, but mm. but uh, but still, it was a good chuckle. Um, yeah, <laughs> but that's what that's basically what you're saying. You you you're you're basically saying these debates are, are not about finding out the truth. They're not about interpreting reality because yeah. you could have argued you're correct. Some other island other than Greenland was the largest in the world before it was discovered, and you'd have been wrong. Um, so it's not about reality. You'd have been factually correct, scientifically correct, on paper correct. Me measurements reality, correct. Well, yeah, in reality correct. I mean, in every way possible. Well, no, yeah. if you said another island other than Greenland is the biggest in the world before Greenland was discovered. No, I, in reality, I, I, yeah, I didn't wrong. say that, though, yeah. Yeah, but, but you'd be wrong, but you'd still win the debate based on your terms, wouldn't you? So you're not about finding the truth. It, the, the, I, I I've said it already. These debates are, are the debates in quote, in quotes. Yeah, because because as you've already noticed, no flat earther has ever brought any substantial evidence uh, 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 at all. Uh, well, uh, except me. that yours but is. Now is now but I gotta be okay. I gotta be honest, Kel Kelbeta. I mean, it's interesting. Yeah. Um, but so far, it's not. It's so it's not stuff, it, yeah, it, it it's just a coordinate transform so far. Uh, it's, I think you're misunderstanding it. Anyway, let's keep going on. Maybe it'll become clear. Oh, there's more. Oh, of course. Of course. Um, <laughs> so let me prepare myself. Yeah. So, for example, we've now established that phenom observable phenomena in our world as well is perfectly compatible with a holographic explanation of our world in a scientifically tested way, which has been peer reviewed and accepted. Now, there's many examples of this, so I'm just giving you one of each to show. Um, 
Next thing, can we use it? I've already shown as well from what I read to you, and there are other examples, that the model can be used as a model in its own right to make predictions, such as the boundary prediction uh, that turn out to be true. So it's accurate in reality that way. What about on a cosmological way? Because the Earth is more part of cosmology than particle physics. So um, yeah. substantial evidence for holographic universe. A UK, Canadian and Italian study has provided what researchers believe is the first observational evidence that our universe could be a vast and complex hologram. Theoretical physicists investigating regularities in CMB have found that there is substantial evidence supporting a holographic explanation of the universe. In fact, as much as there is for a traditional explanation of these irregularities using the theory of cosmic inflation. So the theory of cosmic inflation explains it, the holographic one does at least as accurately but wait, there's more. Um, Turns into an uh, infomercial here. <laughs> so holographic cosmology has a built-in arrow of time. However, the other one does, uh, doesn't. Um, University of Southampton. Mm. Oh, yeah. So, sorry, one second. This is a scientific paper that shows the calculation of firms are assumption that the holographic principle can also be realized in flat spaces. It is evidence for the validity of this correspondence in our universe. Okay. Yes, there are predictions uh, derived I, from that. Yeah, I don't see how uh, it's different than just a coordinate transform, though, but okay. Or well, you don't, but these guys do. Oh. Um, that, that, well, I mean, so, they. So I, just to be clear, so, so you're saying if, if we went to these guys and said, hey, yeah. does your paper there say that the earth is flat? You think they're going to say yes? I think they'd say, why would we be concerned with that at the moment? We're, we're discovering other things. Good. But if, they I'm, would say, they would I, say. I'm pretty sure. Flat, right? And, I, and I, no, I'd bet a lot say. of money on it. I'd bet a lot of mm. money on it. That, if, if I, if if I, I bet that, that they would say, no, none of what we did says anything about the Earth being flat. No, I think what they'd say is the holographic model used, used, you know, either in science stuff or real world predictions, such as the famous one over four pi prediction of the bound of shear viscosity over en entropy density ratio. So that's another one it made. In this paper, we model the transition from the non-holographic cosmology regime, the one that we've got now, to the usual um, radio, radiation dominated co cosmology known as reheating we find we can easily transition into any um cosmo uh, holographic model via these corrections in a three-dimensional field theory as well as in cosmology moreover so this is explaining th this is explaining what happened in the early universe what the scientists from southampton show showed as well we can naturally obtain the true cosmological constant of the observed order of magnitude. So by using this model of our universe, despite it being so inaccurate on the face of it, it will naturally pop out, produce the precise cosmological constant, the precise constant that took 50 years of hard deliberation, extrapolation and solving by the world's top scientists after Einstein's theory of relativity came out. Well, okay. So, Based on the ideas of ADS-CFT correspondence and on the holographic description of inflation defined by Mao Center, the wave function equals a part of uh, it, it was shown that the predictions of the model of CMB fluctuations, the normal ones, are parametrically different than the ones of the holographic model plus inflation. Nevertheless, it fit as well the inflation reruns within experimental errors. In particular, okay, so it fits, um, it fits very thing. What else you will find is during the same papers that use these models, tweaked versions of these models in order to describe early cosmology, not only will it pop out the accurate cosmological constant, but it will also show that the ways these equations must be inscribed on the two-dimensional reality in order to holographically project the universe that we actually experience, there are certain things within these equations that um, 
necessitate logic being broke or separate when it comes into our, our universe. For it, this would be a possible reason why there has so far been no way to, to, to make a complete theory of everything, to, to connect the big with the small, because if the holographic model is correct and the universe is holographic, the way that reality would have to be, be mathematically in order to show the reality that we've got in our three-dimensional universe it would have things in it which would make necessary, which necessitate breaks in logic when translated from 2D to 3D. Okay, so it answered okay. a question that we've been asked as well. Uh, all right. BC Tony says all these papers, papers show is that holographic theory is not yet disproven or falsified. Yes. Fine. But that's completely unrelated to the shape of the Earth. Uh, no, it's not, because if reality is holographic, and the world is real, the world will be holographic in reality. So let me explain so why 2D reality would I mean, be you said more... If, well, you said if and then a bunch of stuff. I really don't care if, uh, about what happens after the if, if, if the, the subject of it hasn't been shown to be true. Yes, but here's the, here's the thing, Gene, and I think, honestly, you've got to be really careful here because one, 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 of, the, one of the reasons that I didn't do debates going for flat earth earlier than this before I had evidence of other stuff was that flat earth is a very toxic community at the moment. Okay. A lot of innocent truth seeking people who went into it with an open mind, you know, and good intentions have been misled, manipulated, deceived for basically a few people at the top, financial good um you know so they can be big fish in a small pond at the at i mean th these sort of people these illuminati shill agents these are the type of people that will lie to your face just to see if you'll believe it and get get a kick out of that and then go from there they're consciously nope. honestly doing it so so all so just to be clear all the people that i've debated are illuminati agents no no many of them most of them will be unfortunately misled and deceived just like uh, you guys okay. have been who, all right so who are who are then the the i mean can, can you tell us who are the main illuminati well, agents just just well, between that's, that's just between you for... me and 633 other people <laughs> Well, th this is what I'm waiting for permission for. But, um, oh. for example, take the this... line of Nathan Thompson. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Nathan Thompson was one. Take the line to people coming from him. Okay. Okay? So all of um, all the people that call him Papa Flurf then are, are you know, under the umbrella oh, of no, his he, Illuminati. He a lot of people. He misled a lot of people yeah. intentionally. I agree. And one... Once I show that this evidence is valid, once I show, hopefully, and I'm surprised that I haven't been able to yet, that you guys right. are actually truth seekers debating in good faith, right? Then I can show the reason for such an abysmal flat earth record. It doesn't matter if people think I'm way out of the box talking about Illuminati. The important thing is that they focus on the logical points and these guys own logic and they start to realize they have been tricked and they also don't have to let go of the rope that's holding them and just realize they've been deceived forever. They can also see that there is hope at the very forefront of science by including the greatest scientists of the generation that show at least up till now, at least hypothetically, the correspondence between a holographic universe and our universe is so scarily correlated, even so right now being so far off, that the potential, the actual potential, scientifically recognized potential and viability of our universe actually being a holographic one and the world in reality actually being flat, they don't have to let go of the rope that's holding them. They don't have right, to protect so I, have, I, have, I have a question then on this. <clears throat> um, since it sounds like you don't disagree that the in our reality that the earth is spherical 
and that in yeah, some I, 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 other projection I, 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 of this I, I, reality. Hold on, hold on, let me let me try to ex explain it before yeah. you jump in. But then in a projection of our reality, you think that that projection is flat. Therefore, yeah. since that projection is flat, the Earth is flat. Um, but our re our right. actual Earth is actually spherical, the one that we can interact with. So what's the point then of of you know why do you think that that the earth must be flat then what what why do you even care actually is it is it okay. coming from some sort of a religious position so look globists have also been misled right and they don't realize it that's how smart the illuminati is so let oh. me give you an example I've asked people in the chat, you also see titles on videos, Flat Earth debunked, call an ambulance, someone killed Flat Earth, Flat Earth falsified, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? They're kind, of, they're kind of fun, yeah. Yeah. What my evidence shows, at least till now, is that there is a very functional, very strong, very innately in touch with our reality um, model, right, which is yet to become a theory for good reason, that says reality is two-dimensional and our three-dimensional reality that we live in is real, but it exists, but it's a projection. So if I can just, if I can just quickly say, so what the, the guy who created the first model, Wild Man Vicella, it became the most cited paper mm -hmm. ever in the history of uh, high energy particle physics. Oh. What his model showed, as a it was of a four and five dimensional universe. What it showed was that if you take this disc which is this four or five dimensional universe with the, with the outside boundary and the inside anti-descent space time and stack them one on top of the other, each one representing a different state of the universe, what you get is like a cylinder, okay? What naturally occurs mathematically through this cylinder is that the cylinder fills in with 3D anti-descent space time wrapped and surrounded by, covered by 3D anti-sitter inverted space-time, which is connected to but infinitely far away from the interior, and gravity itself organically pre organically so, comes into play. This, and this time is can be or, organic non-GMO gravity? This, 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 would, this would be quantum gravity uh -huh. in, in that universe. It, it, it creates itself automatically. He describes it as incidental. Okay. So, so in, a a in a hypothetical universe, I don't really care about a hypothetical no, but, universe all that much. But the thing is, it's called a correspondence because it corresponds to ours. Okay. That's why it's called a correspondence. I don't, I don't, I don't really care. Uh, okay. But here's the point. Here's the point. If you are actually, you know, do have intellectual integrity, you actually do, right? then by me getting the first ever flat earth win here, if I, if I deserve it by really showing not only my hypothesis is currently viable, but can be tested, but is, hasn't been so far. But you've said it can't be tested. Can, can, but it not can. right now. Oh, yeah, it can, not, but not so right you now. Can't. So if it can't right be tested can't. right now, then it's not testable. Okay, if that's the definition of not testable, okay. Yeah. But it... it but it's it's not like the general theory of relativity where there is no empirical way of knowing whether you're moving or everything else is moving around you. There is an empirical way to test it. We just haven't found a theory for quantum gravity yet. But when we do... So we there's that, that pesky thing in the way that may never be done, right? Perhaps. Quantum, Perhaps. quantum gravity may be... May Maybe the completely wrong way of, of uh, understanding things, and so you, you're you're well, we you're basing you're basing your ability to test this on 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 the necessity of a different thing that's so far not testable uh, being well, correct. I'm just saying what the scientists say. Okay. They say I don't know why you can't test it before. The best the best explanation I I, I understood was it would be like looking for Venus. Was that the planet Newton discovered? Or Venus? Neptune? What was that missing planet that Newton's equations predicted then found? Oh, that would be Neptune, yeah. Neptune. It would be like having very strong evidence of very strong correlators pointing yeah, to the was, fact. It was testable. Yeah, but, but it would be like 100 years before Newton, uh -huh. there being very strong evidence pointing to the fact that there was another planet in our sky, 
right? But we didn't know where to look. We didn't know when to look. We didn't know what to look for. If the sky is massive, even if we did spin the telescope around and land on it, we'd have no way to test if that was actually the planet. We needed Newton's law of gravity to come around, right? Before we would know where to look and then test if that thing is really the planet that we, put, that we expect is there. That's the same state that the holographic principle is in now. It's waiting for the theory of quantum gravity. When it gets okay. it, it yeah. will know how to test it. Yeah, so so it's it's not evidence of any sort. It's just a, uh, well, maybe at some point in the future. Okay. No, it, it's uh, evidence, you... but, but, but it's not empirical. We okay. call it circumstantial, let's say, but it is evidence. Uh, okay. I okay. Don't, I don't it's not see how it's evidence, but okay. Um, well, so it's, it's, it, how do you not see it's evidence? And you've got the greatest scientists of the generation stating it is evidence. Yeah, right? it's, it's not, not empirical it's not, evidence. It's not. It's, not, oh, it's not empirical. I, what I'm looking yeah. for, I guess. I guess that qualifier is a little important. It's empirical evidence, is what I'm looking for. Yes. It, it, yes. Yeah. But it is evidence. I'm looking for that. Now, I did. Now, uh, uh, Professor Phil Bell hmm. uh, said that that uh, you have a posh accent. Do, do you want to do you want to go back on on screen? Uh, not yet. I'm just having a cigarette. Oh, okay. All right. Um, yeah. And so I did a poll. Uh, so people vo yeah. vote vote if you haven't voted yet in the poll on whether or not your accent is posh, as Professor Philbo's uh, opinion says. Where's he from? He's Where's from he Aus from? Australia. Oh uh, well, we so I'm, I mean, he he does Australia. does he even get to say whether or not? A British not accent really. of any sort is posh or not. I mean, he's not I, I, even. I, think, I mean, he does. He does do what the Queen says. Still, <laughs> I mean, the King. Well, the Queen's dead. <laughs> I know. Long live the King. I looked up yeah. his coronation. Isn't until May. Oh well, you guys are not in a hurry. Whew. No, um, he doesn't do much. They don't do much for royals. Um. All right. Well, well, so, all right, people, I'm going to end the poll here so that the, uh, there it is. The, the final, the final is out of 255 votes is, is, uh, Kelbeda's accent posh. No wins. It was 60%, but 40% <laughs> think you have a posh accent. So I, I call that a success. Um, well, I come from a working class background, but ever since I was about like 10 or 12, we, we became middle class. Well, so I've go. probably got a little bit of both. Um, um, some there, there's some feedback from the audience. If, if if we've been at this for two hours, I don't know if you want to. Uh, oh, well, wow. you, you should plug in your phone. It's got to low low power mode. Yeah. So ba basically, it's a model that has stood up to every test so far. It's still working on other tests. Actually, it sounds in... it sounds like it hasn't really been tested a whole bunch. You're talking about empirically. Yes, empirically. It's not yes, even tested. It, it can't be. We can't keep repeating this point. It yeah, can't be. Exactly. So, all right. Yeah. Uh, well, I hope you get the go-ahead. Um, who, whoever, you, who, um, the anti-Illuminati person that's finally along, I hope you give him the go-ahead to do whatever it is that he's talking about. Do, do you mind a little interaction from the audience? No, go for it. Do I oh. win then? Well, I mean, I kind of ahead of time, I said, I, I don't really consider a win or not. But if you're going to ask me for my opinion, I'd say no, because I like I kind of like empirical evidence, the kind of silly pee person that I am. We agreed. we agreed at the beginning of the debate. What 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 the format of this debate was going to be, you agreed to it. There necessarily has to be a way for the other person to win. There has the, to the be a way. Yeah, to. I agree. There has to be a way. And there currently is no way, according to your standards. There's no way. Yeah. Until until it until there's a well, flat. Well, I mean, earth th there is a way. There is absolutely, there no is a way. way. It would have to be like show actual measurements, empirical measurements of the Earth being flat. But and no, no, but but but, but then you you could say okay, but you know, these could be falsified by doing this test or this test. You can make exactly the same argument. And the only thing that the only point where it actually becomes different is when it becomes a theory. So you know at this point, I cannot provide nobody can provide any evidence that meets your standard. Yeah, just the kind of the basic it, it, you know empirical evidence standard. No, no, so, no, but, but you are you not understanding on purpose? Because this seems like quite a simple point. It's just a point of logic. 
Okay. If you agree, if you agree to the fact that in a debate, both sides must have an equal chance of winning going in, basically meaning there is nothing innate, inbuilt in the debate, which means one side cannot win or one side starts with a massive head start and, a mass- yeah. and the other... Mass- but, if but you I mean, agree to those principles... But, but K- K- Kilbeda, I, yeah, I mean, you kind of you kind of figured me out in the in the middle here when, when you figured out that... I can't believe that, you're that, admitting that. You're, you're, doing that so, you're not really doing damage to Earth, but you're really doing damage to Flat Earth by saying that. I don't care. Now there's no way to help these people. You're completely insincere. Are you right? I this there is no there is no actual there like, is true way. debate in reality because because the Earth has been measured, um, the Earth it's it's empirically a fact that the Earth is spherical. So it is it is a a, a little bit of a of a I don't know what uh, what you want to say, but it's definitely not no, an actual be, be, debate be, because in political right? debates you can debate whether you know. Look at Trump. He yeah, won th- like political debates. Th- there's no, there's no actual. Yeah, I, I, in in politics, is there an actual, true, correct opinion to have? Well, well, no. There's actual true facts to state, and some are false. Th- there are true facts. Yes, like the Earth is spherical. So yeah, and, uh, and Trump all right. did say what he said. But he said he didn't, and he won debates based on lying. Uh, it, yeah, it, it, which which is what I mean. Yeah, which is completely not the kind of debate that I have here. But with, what you're with doing is it, 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 a pernicious exhibition. Yes. Deceitful. Absolutely. I, I agree. Why would you admit to that? You, I mean, if, <laughs> if we you've watched show... if you've watched my videos for a while, you, you would have seen that. This isn't the first time oh. I've said it. Is it not? No. <laughs> I, I tell people all the time that I cheat. I make oh, no, the other actually, person take the the factually false position. And so when people ask me not, to debate on cheating. other topics... That's not cheating. Cheating is not is not it, making someone take a factually false position. That, yeah, that's just it, being... It's also hyperbolic when I say that. Yeah, it's just, but it's right. definitely not cheating. Cheating is rigging the debate from the very start, not giving suppose, yourself yeah. the best possible effort, but actually rigging the structure of it. Yeah, or, and, or and, buying off the judges, maybe. Yeah, Could, but, yeah. If, if well, there was that, a, that if rigging. this was a, yeah. a Lincoln Douglas or an Oxford or a Mace debate or something, exactly. but it's not. That, this, that, this is this is just entertainment. But right? what I'm saying is the reason Globe can't help flat earthers at all is because Globe takes the very arrogant position. Yeah. Of assuming that two hours a month, let's say, if so, if a flat Earth debates a global once a month, two hours a month of hearing globe logic, which is ultimately arbitrary but correct, against flat Earth, ultimately arbitrary but incorrect so far logic, that is going to have some effect when that person is going to go back into the flat Earth community. And the leaders are going to surround them and have all these hours for all these days to work on them and repeat lie after lie after lie until it becomes the truth. You cannot help them that way. The way you could help them is by getting them to realize they've been deceived by overcoming the major boundary to getting them to to realize that, which is if they think flat earth is a total, there's absolutely no hope in it, then they've got to admit they've wasted all their lives. They've got to admit they're a fool. They're never going to admit that. However, if they have a win, perhaps the first win ever, then they they can take that win. They can use their suspicious minds to direct it upon the people who are spending lots of time out of it, and they can figure out reality and come back into reality because it no longer means that they're humiliated fools who have lost everything. They were actually truth seekers who found out something that people never know. Yeah, I don't think that most flat earthers are actually truth seekers. I think that they're happy to not be truth. But but hold, let, let's let let's go to the interaction if we could. Um, I do have a poll out to, to see. I, I I do admit that it is maybe a little uh, biased, uh, but uh-huh. uh, currently asking uh, the, in the poll whether or not they thought think you win. But second best, Bob. Uh, yeah. is thanking me for an early UK start time. So I do appreciate that that you're in the UK and mm-hmm. and uh, uh, yeah, that it worked you. out. I have another one that's actually an hour earlier next week with a guy from oh, cool. from uh, the UK. 
Uh, Serena News 1 says, this stream is brought to you by Preparation H. Four to five flurfs choose Preparation H as their toothpaste. <laughs> when I was a kid, I remember it was not Preparation H. Um... I didn't, um, there was something in the, in the, uh, medicine cabinet and I thought it was toothpaste. It was not, it tasted terrible, but, uh, but, uh, it was definitely not preparation age. Many Karen for six shekels is translation. When I lose, it won't prove I'm wrong. That was, uh, early at the beginning. Um, let me know when you're ready to go back on screen. I don't want to put you back on if you're okay, not, one uh, second. if you're not ready, uh, and then just, just stop, stop your share and it'll come in. Um, Tim Tully says, reality is that which, when you stop believing in it, is still there. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting way to put it. I like that. Fits perfectly with my argument. Uh, Delcos here. This is a good one. Fish or mammals? They don't have boobs. <laughs> That's his metric, apparently, for mammals. Hilo, 1408 says, A of Hell Beta. Most of our mm. assumptions are things your fellow flurfs have claimed. Don't insult us because you can't decide how the flat Earth works. And uh, and so to that point, I decided. to that to that point, w we test the claims, right? So so if somebody yeah, if a, 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 a flat earther, I mean it, it wasn't it wasn't me that proposed this map, right? It was many flat yeah. earthers, but then some flat earther says, "Hey, don't straw man me. That's not our map." Well, yes, it is Fair enough. your map. Flat Earthers presented this map, um, starting no, with some... Robotham. Right? No, you 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 can't you can't you can't say in, you can't say distinct people can be grouped entirely into a fractured, you know. Correct, not, but but it wasn't me group. or any Globers that proposed that map for them. It was no, them. no, no. But for, but for people who claim such high intellectual rigor, in intellectual, you know sincerity and an objective fact-based observational cool neutral approach to evidence that's a lot of, that's a to, to stand on that high ground first off and then make those claims straight away about somebody you've never met or never heard of I, it's 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 a common sense thing to assume but you're not claiming to be common sense people so sure we are no, no, but you, well, you're claiming to be more than that. Okay. Yeah. So Thank you. You, you don't right. really get the right to make those common sense assumptions wrongly if you're going to claim that. Okay. I just, you know, I just want to test their map. Right? Because mm. this is a, you know, this is a three-dimensional world and I'm a three-dimensional girl. I'm well, boy, if, boy, if, if gravity boy. has been produced uh, according to the holographic model in our universe the same way, then this would actually be incidental. The other interesting thing all right, is hold on, that... Hold on, we, we got more to go okay. through here. Okay, okay. We got, uh, you already went through all this. All right, Stringer News 1 says, get to the point, Bazooka Joe. And then he says, before Australia was discovered, <laughs> Greenland was and is the largest island. And then again, he comes in with half an hour and he forgot to ask for ransom. What's wrong? Because because you're you you got the, the mask on. Um, Doublehead Steve says flurfs never go first, and that's a good point. They uh, almost never do do flat earthers go first in a debate. Um, did I go first? I went no. first. Remember went this, first, yeah. this this right here. Man. Did I present positive evidence that hasn't been falsified? You presented a. Uh, hypotheses that have not been tested. No, I presented positive evidence, not empirical, true, but positive evidence that has not been falsified, more than any other flat earther has ever done. You could make a point there. You could make a point. Mm -hmm. We'll 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 see we'll see what the uh, the if you watching this later, tell us in the comments what you think about that. Many Karen says I asked a neutron to get his perspective. It said this yeah. guy is a flat heart. <laughs> she's a globe tard, a sphere stroker. Many Karen, many Karen, the best of my knowledge, is not a she. Oh, uh, sounds like a she. Assumptions. Many, but I'm many, a many Karen is, is uh, if you noticed, I said shekels. So uh, that Ooh. would be, that would be a, uh, the, name is, the name is not American. Yes. Israeli. 
There you go. All right. Um, Stringer News once is happy, happy <laughs> hollow, as in uh, hologram. Halloween, everybody. Happy so. Halloween. Uh, Alan Bupre says, <laughs> Kel, why is everyone wrong but you? No, I, I actually said the opposite. I actually said you were right. I'm just more right. <laughs> I didn't say you were wrong. <laughs> Oh dear. Okay, Pilo fourteen oh eight says he's confusing fractal math with hologram theory. No. Fractal math. No. no. I, I, I think he's just he's taking a taking a stab at, at uh, hologram theory there. Um, Stringer News one comes back oh, with graphic. spoiler. It's a globe. Yeah. Andy Tiger's sci-fi review says, according to the National Library of Medicine, the depth of the ice. Of the snowball Earth is ten meters or less. This would allow yeah. uh, eukaryotic life. I think I said that right. Eukary eukaryotic life. Eukaryotic life. Yeah. I think to photosynthesize, so it's the size. So the size of the Earth doesn't change significantly. No, if you put it all in one place. Just to yeah, you just want to put it one one chunk yeah. in the middle of of North America. I mean, that's Canada, Can I mean, you put where it you in, are. <laughs> I, I'm not in Canada. Wait. Where are you? I thought you were Canadian. People. People where pick it. People accuse me in Minnesota of being uh, Canada, a Canadian. Oh <laughs> my gosh. And you fell for it. <laughs> it's the Illuminati that, that tainted your mind to think that yeah. I'm Canadian. For, for the earth uh, to be flat, globe doesn't have to be wrong. Illuminati mind trick. They played it on you. Uh, oh my gosh um <laughs> miles wilson says and this applies to a flat earth how oh we've been through this if reality is flat then the earth is flat mm, then everything in flat. reality in objective is, is reality. This, just yes or no because your answer i'm sure would be too long is this driven from a biblical perspective for you no not no. at all it doesn't say the earth is flat in the bible i agree all right um Technics says, notice your shine pouring. Are you into homeopathy? I I <laughs> thought about that as I set this up. Um, I started with this one. Did you notice? I mean, you were talking a lot. I started with this mason jar. And I ended with this little guy here. That's a lot of shine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh... I got that on eBay, seventeen dollars, one gallon mason jar. Wow. Um, no, no homeopathy. That, that's ridiculous. Theo Fungi, agree. Your Illuminati. You were me. I don't know. One of us. I don't know. How you, can you? You're probably you Illuminati. No intellectual integrity. That's how, a sign of the Illuminati. How, how can you discuss anything with that closed mind? Me. I, I don't I don't know. I think I think Theo Fungi is is making the accusation on you. I don't know how that's I closed. Know. I don't know. Um many Karen says, Miss the Illuminati ate my homework. Perhaps if it was about the real shape of the earth, perhaps. <laughs> uh, I, I I don't understand your motivations. Um but then uh, Bellis says this is a perfect example of word salad. It was, I mean, it wasn't no, Witsit. It wasn't. it wasn't Witsit word salad. That's a whole different flavor. But I was starting I wish to I could feel. Explain it more clearly. I was starting to want a little blue cheese dressing in the middle there. Inquisitor Rurik says if we're going by who has the most compelling argument, Kel, you're losing. What you're saying is incoherent because you keep going off on tangents. Fair enough. I accept that. Layal says gravitation is in one of the papers. Flurf reject gravity, but he's a different kind of flurf. This isn't a this isn't a rejecting gravity type of flurf. I say gravity exists, but it's not real in the real sense of the word. It's, it's incidental. It's it, but but it is in the like eighth dimension. We can uh, get a we can get not. a we can pour ourselves a glass of gravity <laughs> in the eighth dimension. Uh, <laughs> Todd Burt says, how does Kell's model explain the Van Halen belt? It's just, you can just use the globe model. It will be mapped differently on the flat earth, but it will translate exactly to what we see now. The the Van Halen belt? Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, BFEF says, all hail the new mighty MC Tune Mason jar. <laughs> I've had this going for weeks. I, I'll, I'll tell the story of it sometime. PhD Tony uh, says, let's see. Yeah, uh, two dimensional surfaces are not necessarily flat. We went over that already. Um, Aggressa says, sorry, just got here. Is this pseudo Psy Man Dan? No. This is real science. Uh, are you, are you, what do you think of Simon Dan? I, I, I'm not a glober, but I like Simon Dan. Yeah. So if you thought, if you and him were in a back alley, there would be no rumble like the Illuminati and Freemason rumble that would happen. Illuminati and me, there'd be a rumble. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you a fan of Dan Brown's movies? No, but I liked his books when they came out at first. They're very similar. I After read the first four books are identical. <laughs> That's all I read. I don't know if he has more books at all. But when I were when I was got through the the fourth one that I read, I did not read them in order. I'm like, this was the exact same plot. <laughs> PhD Tony says that certain physical phenomena are consistent with holographic principle. Yeah, it's not the same as I they said. are holographic. I never said they were. I said consistent. So it's just a model. And what does Nathan Oakley call that if you just, uh, if all you have is a model? Is it reification? Reification. It's his favorite word. But that's not what actually, that's not what it actually means. And if you look at reification, the translation on Wikipedia, it actually says in the scientific sense, it's valid. If you look it up now on Wikipedia, you'll see it. All right. Uh, Lael again comes in with flurfs don't believe in gravity. How does he explain that physicists would say the data shows that gravity exists? Well, no, I, gravity exists. It's just not real, real. It's not a fundamental part of reality. It's incidental, like a shadow is incidental, not fundamentally part of reality. Okay. So the Earth is a globe and gravity exists, but it's not how you think it is. Right. No, in, in, the real reality is flat. But in our reality, which isn't the real reality, but in our reality, it's... Later's cave, yeah. All right. It's, it's, yeah. Pilo 1408 says, so because Flat Earth has no evidence, we have to go easy on them. Nice try, Flurf. No. I think he's not talking about you. I think he's talking about the other Flurfs that are the fake Flurfs, other than you, because you're the real Flurf. No, no. I, I've just said, in specific relation to this argument, you have to remove whether I've got a theory or not, because everyone knows this, Flat this Earth is a, got one. I, I just, all right. So I don't know if you're going to get the green light or not, to reveal yeah. the true head Illumin head Illuminati plants in the Flurf community, but can well, you? Do you think you'll you'll be able to reveal who the real Flurfs are, other than you, of course? I I think there are a lot of real Flurfs. I think unfortunately, when new Flurfs come in, they they are real, and I think after time, people get so they fall manipulated. For the, they fall for the fake Flurfs. So who's the other leaders of the real flurfs? There's none. They will. There, there's some good faith leaders, but they're not very effective. So you're you're the only one. I'm not a leader. I'm I'm just. There, there will be other uh, flurfs, like, especially people in, interested in the real, holographic model. Real flurfs. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, but there the are Sun, real flurfs. The Sun Express wonders how uh, there are many bumps on Lake Titicaca. Mm-hmm. And uh, this was 45 minutes in. Ableist says, when does the debate start? Uh, <laughs> PG Tony says, all these papers shows that holographic theory is not yet disproven. We went over yeah, that already. There we go. Thank you. Uh, Liquid Flame says, Flat Earth is toxic, says the guy using the R word. So you call it, you call a bunch of people globe, t globe tarts, you see. Yeah, that starts with T, tart. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the, the R E is implied. It is when you, implied. When but, you end with but, tard, the R-E is implied on it. Well, right? well bl blame cool hard logic, not me. Well, yeah, he, he did uh, he did make some good some um, incendiary videos. Uh, mm -hmm. William Foley says, next debate topic, what's nuttier, Kel Beta or Squirrel Droppings? I, I don't know. But this is this is all science. It's it's a model that's actually used to make predictions and can explain things in the universe. Uh -huh. And actually, so in touch with the reality, it pops out the cosmological constant. It shows why logic is necessarily fractured in our world if it does turn out to be so. 
and it encompasses everything in yeah, its you, scope I mean, going you, forward. You went, it's true. It's massive. You went through that already. Harry. William, yeah, but, I mean, William Foley says talking. Ken Wheeler called. You know Ken Wheeler? He called. No, he no, wants his word him. salad shooter back. That's unfair. I think you and Ken Wheeler could have an, a uh, a massive conversation. Um, okay. I don't know. But I think that's unfair it, because be... it's my first debate, and I and I couldn't do it clearly. I think it's unfair to say I was trying to word salad people. Uh, <laughs> I I don't usually. Whatever. Except for Wits. Witsit is the the king. I don't think you, you did not dethrone him for sure. No, um, and I quoted actual scientists. Well, he he cherry picks actual scientists. Yeah, but I didn't cherry pick. Yeah, you can check it yourself. Uh, Stringer News one says, uh, "Did you agree that one side could win by sheer attrition? <laughs> He's good at using low, long windedness and tedium, but to what end?" Well, I'm sorry, it's my first debate. It's his first debate, people. Stringer News one. I'll try and do on. it better next time. I can understand <laughs> it would have been annoying for people. I, I've enjoyed this. I really. I, I, <laughs> did you get the green light yet? I hope so. Yeah, I'm almost done here. Timbo Turtle sent uh, something with no message. Peachy Tony said your your guest lost by not being able to provide objective evidence for this hypothesis. Abject failure. For empirical, un, empirical. Unsavable because they reject reality. What? Um, oh, there's two of me. There's two of me, people. It's tune incep tuneception. All right. Um... Many Karen says, we never claim to be truth seekers or intellectually honest. We just claim we're right. And we are. Two, can I, can I just quickly send you some of the links that I've been able to recover so you can post them in the chat so people can do their own? Sure. I, I tell you what, I, I will. My word salad is not. I'll do um, this. I, I, uh, hopefully, I may have time after we're done. Definitely later tonight, I will take. Um, and I'll put the, the all the links you send me. I'll create a web page on my web server. And put I just the link. it. Link yeah. in the description, uh, but it will okay. be mctune.net slash um, Kelbeta. That'll, okay. be, that'll be where I put it. We got, I got a final one here from Timbo Turtle. It says, if you win a war of word, does that change reality? The stars still spin around the southern celestial pole and rise south of east in the summer. And space is real. Flurfs will never change. But I, this space is a is different... Real. This is a different flavor of flair. All right, so I'm going to end the poll with 349 votes. What, what mm. do you think? What do you think it's going to be? I don't know. 348, you win. Uh, we have, we have did, did Calbeta win? 93% said no. 6% said yes. Leading 1% wow. margin of error. So is that the best the flurf has ever done? <sighs> Probably not. <clears throat> probably not <laughs> at least in the the popular vote the question is <clears throat> of the 349 maybe maybe your illuminati friend is or your anti-illuminati friend is uh i don't have i don't have any friends in the chat but but how, but you're waiting for the thumbs up yeah the the point is i can't get the thumbs up to go ahead with it until we know that after we reveal everything, we have a way of helping the flurfs. And the only way to help the flurfs is to get past that psychological block, which is basically a defense mechanism. That, that's, that's the only way we can get through to the flurfs and allow them and, to but how, accept but how, reality. How will you know during this debate? Well, the point was, if I won, if I was able to present it more clearly, more oh. concisely, then I would be able to bring something of great value to them. Should we and redo the poll to them. and see, well, and see yeah. if people will if people will say that you won, so that we can get this information revealed? Yeah, yeah. Ask ask All them right. to do it like with intellectual integrity, and if I win with intellectual integrity, according to the confines of the debate, which means whether it's a hypothesis or a theory doesn't matter at all um and see if in reality my model which is still scientifically viable very very broad has grown very quickly very organically would mean that in reality the earth is flat more than in reality the earth is a globe and if they do say i win then i bring back something that has never happened 
And then I can say, look, Fluss, you can now accept reality because there's nothing to fear. You were right all along, but these people have been tricking you. Look, I'll explain how they tricked you. All right. The poll, the poll is up. Um, in half an hour, people, I will be debating um, on the 24-7 Cosmology Tartaria server. <coughs> with if, if you're familiar with uh, Shane St. Pierre, he's one of the people on there. Um, yeah. It's going to be a 2v2, myself and Negator versus two Flat Earthers, which um, I forget their names. Jesse and he'll kill something. Okay. Just so, so people know in about half an hour. Um, I forgot the guy's name. Hold on. I, I, I'll get it. I'll get it in a second while people are voting. People, remember, if you vote yes, then he will reveal the information. Because I can bring back the first... But you, you've got to admit, at the very least, I am the first one to provide at least one piece of positive, non-falsifiable evidence for the flat Earth. I provide a lot more than one piece. I think it's a little bit of a stretch to call it evidence, though. But it, it is it's not evidence. You're, you're, no, it's not empirical evidence. I never said empirical. There's lots of types of evidence. Sure. But no, no flat earther has even provided any type of circumstantial evidence that hasn't been debunked or disproven. Yeah. I've provided lots. And my model is true, would be the most revolutionary breakthrough in science ever. Uh, that... <laughs> Probably, well, wouldn't it? I mean, quant first quantum gravity, and then second holographic, and then third that holographic is strictly flat, not on a on a multi dimensional. No, 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 no. Right? My my, de my definition of flat is not having volume, not occupying a three D space. It doesn't have to be a flat piece of paper. It can be curved. It can be. A... So your de your your definition of flat volume. is is that it could be non flat, as most people think of it as flat. Just as long you're as it's two dimensional. Level. You're thinking of level. Globers always say flat doesn't mean level. What you're talking about is level. Um, what I'm talking about is flat. Not having volume. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you're saying that, that it could be this, and you're saying that this is flat. I'm saying if that had absolutely no mass, the surface. Yeah, if it had this. absolutely no mass, it could be that. Or if it was just the surface of it, but not a connected chain, yeah, so, giving it volume. So, so just the surface of this is flat, where other people would say that just the surface of this is two-dimensional, but it's not flat. Um, well, it, it, the, You've kind of just no given volume. a different definition. It would have no volume. Yeah. Yeah. If it was, Strictly if it the, wasn't surface, or, the surface of a sphere has no volume. Yes, two-dimensional yeah, has but, no volume but, and is not flat. But you can't, you can't connect the surface of a sphere with matter without it becoming three dimensional. Yeah, yeah. So so it's just a no, two dimensional coordinate transform. So all right. So no no, so the easiest way to think about it would be like a hologram. You inscribe it in 2D but it shows up in 3D. That would be the easiest way to think could, about could, it. Could we live on the inside? Could we could could it be a hollow earth? Nobody no. wants to know that. Um, I, I don't think so. <laughs> uh Stringer News One says well Wait, if, if I vote yes, he talks more? No, no, no. All right, well, the poll's got 191 votes. I'm going to wait for 200. People, if you haven't voted, go do it quick. I'm going to lose again. Oh, uh, so close. I have a feeling. I have a bad feeling about this. Do you want Do you want a round two at some point in the future? Where I, I would love that. I would love that. Yeah. I think I think it could be very, very entertaining. Thank um, you. And a good time. I mean, I'm certainly... I've enjoyed this and, and maybe yeah. a little less of the, the introductory things. Cause that got a little old. Um, Sorry, it's my first one. I was I, quite anxious. I, it, you've, you've done fine. Um, Thank you. So, all right. 205 volts volts we got. And uh, yeah, it, it did not, it did not go in your favor <laughs> again, but you, you gained some ground. I think yeah, pe right. people want, people want to hear, they want to know uh, the, the Illuminati, the anti-Illuminati well, information. Uh, anyway, maybe next the, time, maybe after round two. Uh, the, yeah, seventy-two percent said no. Twenty-eight percent. Twenty-seven percent said uh, yeah. <laughs> you you won. So there you go. Okay, thank you. 
Okay. All right. Yeah. Don't erase the evidence next time. All right. Did, you said you sent emailed it. Okay. I will. I, I have. I have twenty five minutes. Yeah. I. I have maybe. I have to. For some reason, I'm feeling like I need to hit the bathroom here. <laughs> um. Okay. Shall I? Just, shall I log out? Shall I check out? J j just a second here. Let me. Mm. Uh, Peter G says round two when he has a testable model. So after quantum gravity. <laughs> so. All right. No, well, uh, you don't. You don't need to. You don't need to log out. We we can have a chat briefly afterwards. Um, okay. But everybody else, um, the uh, the this should bring you uh, the to to the next one. And if people want to put it in the chat, I'd love that from the um, the mods. Thank you very much, everybody. Be sure to to tune in in uh, twenty five minutes for the uh, the two v two debate. And uh, thank you very much to Kelbeda. And one, if you could do a quick anything. As we go. Okay. Uh, scientifically viable, not yet disproven, very, very broad scope, growing very quickly and organically. Look into it. Reality won't change. And I still say the globe is a globe. Right. <laughs> As well. Thank you. All right. Mark Beiser says, refreshingly, not the usual derp, but still derp nonetheless. All right. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you later. All right. Bye. <laughs> okay.